Напоминаю всем ораторам о необходимости like ограничивать Сейчас я представляю слово Mr. <laughs> Riyad Maliki, Wazir Khalidiyat, Dawlat Filistin, Al-Shakiqa. Al-Sayyid Al-Ra'is, Innana Najjami Uliyum, Fi Dhilli Dhurufin Sa'batin Wa Asibah, Tajtazuha Al-Qadiyyat Al-Falistiniyah, Wa Al-Qudsu Al-Sharif Al-Khusus. Innama Najjaduh Lil-Asaf, Min Ziyadati Halati Al-Ihtiqan, Wa Al-Tawattur, Dakhila Madinati Al-Qudsu, Wa Natijatun Li Wadaiyat Al-Ta'annut Wa Al-Jumud, Al-Lati Talati Al-Amaliyat Al-Silmiyat Al-Shakiq Al-Awsat, Mimma Yadfa'una Nahwa Al-Sibahat Al-Muqaddasat, Wa Nashri Thaqafati Al-Unf Wa Al-Karah في المنطقة بأكملها وإضافة إلى ذلك فإن الإجراءات الأحادية والممنهجة والمتعارضة مع القانون الدولي وقرارات الأمم المتحدة وكل الأعمال السلسازية التي تمس بالحقوق المشروعة للشعب الفلسطيني تقوض أسس التوصل إلى حل الدولتين الذي توافق عليه المجتمع الدولي وقد أدانت المملكة المغربية يوم الخامس من هذا الشهر اقتحام القوات الإسرائيلية للمسجد الأقصى المبارك والاعتداء على المصلين وترويعهم خلال شهر رمضان المبارك ودعت المملكة المغربية التي يرأس عاهلها جلالة الملك محمد السادس نصره الله لجنة القدس المنبثقة عن منظمة التعاون الإسلامي إلى ضرورة احترام الوضع القانوني والديني والتاريخي في القدس والأماكن المقدسة والابتعاد عن الممارسة والانتهاكات التي من شأنها أن تقضي على كل فرص السلام بالمنطقة كما أكدت المملكة المغربية رفضها لمثل هذه الممارسات التي لن تزيد الوضع في الأراضي الفلسطينية المحتلة إلا تعقيدا وتوترا وتقوض جهود تحقيق التهدئة وإعادة بناء الثقة السيد الرئيس ما فتي أصاحب جلال الملك محمد السادس نصره الله بصفته رئيس لجنة القدس يحرص على بدل قصار الجهود السياسية والدبلوماسية والميدانية من أجل الحفاظ على الوضع المتميز لهذه المدينة المقدسة وفي هذا الإطار أكد جلالة الملك في نداء القدس الذي وقعه جلالته بمعية قداسة البابا فرانسيس بمناسبة زيارة قداسته إلى المملكة المغربية في تاريخ 30 مارس 2019 على ضرورة المحافظة على الوضع القانوني والحضاري والديني للقدس الشريف باعتبارها تراثا مشتركا للإنسانية وأرضا للقاء ورمزا للتعايش السلمي بالنسبة لأتباع الديانات التوحيدية الثلاث كما أن لجنة القدس الشريف تقوم بدون انقطاع بدورها السياسي والعملي لدعم الشعب الفلسطيني عامة والمقدسيين على وجه الخصوص وتزاوج بين المساعي السياسي التي يقوم بها صاحب جلال الملك محمد السادس نصره الله والعمل الميداني الذي تقوم به وكالة بيت مال القدس الشريف لتعليمات ملكية سامية وتواصل, بيت وتواصل وكالة بيت المال القدس الشريف بصفتها الذراع الميداني للجنة القدس في تأدية رسالتها في حماية المدينة المقدسة في إطار خطة سنوية تضع لها آليات الحكامة المناسبة في تدبير الموارد وصرفها وفق مقاربة تشاركية مع أهل القدس ومع مؤسساتهم وتتكفل المملكة المغربية بتمويل أكثر من 86% من ميزانية هذه الوكالة وقد تمكنت وكالة بيت المال القدس الشريف سنة 2022 من تنفيذ مشروعات في مدينة القدس بقيمة 3.2 مليون دولار أمريكي توزعت على قطاعات المساعدة الاجتماعية والصحة والتعليم والإسكان والشباب والرياضة والثقافة وأطلقت الوكالة في القدس في مارس 2023 برنامجها لشهر رمضان الكريم بغلاف مالي يتجاوز 200 ألف دولار أمريكي وتلقى الجهود القيمة والحتيثة التي يقوم بها صاحب جلال الملك محمد السادس صلى الله بصفته رئيس رئيس للجنة القدس بالإشادة والتقدير التام والبالغ من طرف, من طرف القيادة والشعب الفلسطينيين من طرف المجتمع الدولي كما عبرت عن ذلك مداخلة المجموعة العربية هذا الصباح والمداخلات التي ستلقيها دول عدم الحياز منظمة التعاون الإسلامي بعد قليل وهذه المداخلات 
ما هي إلا إعادة تأكيد القرارات والإعلانات التي اعتمدتها هذه المجموعات على مستوى وأساء دولها ووزراء خارجيتها السيد الرئيس تجدد المملكة المغربية التأكيد على تضامنها الكامل والشامل مع الحقوق المشروعة للشعب الفلسطيني الشقيق المبني على الشرعية الدولية والمستند إلى حل الدولتين المتوافق عليه من طرف المجتمع الدولي والمفضي إلى قيام دولة فلسطينية مستقلة على حدود الرابع من يونيو 1967 عاصمتها القدس الشرقية قابلة للحياة وتعيش جنبا إلى جنب مع إسرائيل في جو من الأمن والطمأنينة والسلام إن القضية الفلسطينية ستظل مفتاح السلام والاستقرار في منطقة الشرق الأوسط لذلك وجب النأي بهذه القضية عن كل ما من شأنه المساس بأهميتها والابتعاد بها عن المزايدات السياسوية العقيمة لأطراف كان الأحرى بها الدفاع عن القضية الفلسطينية بدل الزج بها في resorted to double standards. In conclusion, I would like to reiterate the message of His Majesty Mohammed VI that he launched in 12th of February 2023 during the high-level conference that was held in Cairo. And I quote, as we do believe in the fact that, uh, that peace is a strategic uh, uh, option in the Middle East, we will continue to spare no efforts and to and to leverage our international relations towards contributing to any international effort to resume negotiations as this is the only way to put an end to the conflict and to achieve security, stability and prosperity in the Middle East. Uncode. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Morocco for his statement. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Pakistan. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, Pakistan commends the Russian presidency for convening this timely debate on the Middle East, including the Palestinian question. We welcome the participation of Foreign Minister Lavrov in this meeting, and we also welcome the Foreign Minister of Palestine for his presence. The Prime Minister of Pakistan has condemned Israel's brutal crackdown during the holy month of Ramadan, using stun grenades and tear gas against innocent Muslim worshippers at the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Mr. President, the Al-Aqsa Mosque is Islam's third holiest site. Violation of its sanctity offends Muslims across the world. Israel's actions violate the historical and legal status quo. They violate the right to freedom of worship enshrined in Article 18 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and endorsed by General Assembly Resolution 36-55 of 1981. International law, furthermore, unequivocally restricts Israel, the occupying power, from seizing land and building settlements in occupied territories, including East Jerusalem. Security Council Resolutions 46, 476, 478, and 2234 inter alia prohibit Israel from altering the demographic composition of the Palestinian territory occupied since 1967. In a recent statement, the United Nations Special Rapporteurs on the Situation of Human Rights in the Palestinian Territory, the Special Rapporteur on the Right of Adequate Housing and on Human Rights of Internally Displaced Persons, stressed inter alia that, and I quote, Palestinians under Israeli occupation <clears throat> continue to be forced out of their homes and dispossessed of their land and properties on the basis of discriminatory laws, unquote. And that, I quote, such practices, along with Israel's transfer of its own population into the occupied territory, confirm a deliberate intention to colonize the territory it occupies, a practice strictly prohibited by international humanitarian law. It amounts to a prima facie war crime.
Unquote. Mr. President, Pakistan has welcomed the adoption of UN General Assembly Resolution 77-400, seeking the advisory opinion of the International Court of Justice on the legal consequences arising from the policies and practices of Israel in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem. The Security Council, once it receives this opinion, will have to adopt further measures to ensure full compliance with international law. In particular, Israel must comply with its international obligation to respect the right of the Palestinian people to self-determination. Given the erga omnes character of the right of self-determination, it is also incumbent on all states in accordance with the United Nations Charter and international law to ensure that any impediment to the exercise by the Palestinian people of its right to self-determination is immediately brought to an end. The international community cannot accept the faith accompli Israel is seeking to impose to destroy Palestinian nationhood. There will be no durable peace in the Holy Land until the creation of an independent, viable, and contiguous state of Palestine established on the basis of pre-1967 borders with Al-Quds al-Sharif as its capital. Mr. President, apart from Israel's illegal and disruptive actions, the Middle East has witnessed several positive developments in recent months. Pakistan warmly welcomes the normalization of relations between the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Islamic Republic of Iran. We commend the sincere and successful efforts made by the leadership of the People's Republic of China to make this historical diplomatic breakthrough possible. Pakistan also welcomes the diplomatic and political measures initiated to restore peace and normalcy in Syria and in Yemen. We hope that all the countries of the Arab and Islamic world will soon succeed in ending strife and restoring peace and stability across the Middle East and the Islamic world. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Pakistan for their statement, and I give the floor to the representative of the Islamic Republic of Iran. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful, Mr. President, I thank Russia for organizing this important and timely open debate. For 75 years, the Palestinian people have been victims of the Israeli regime's unrelenting aggression, violence, and injustice. The occupation of their land continues with cities behind blockade, property and farmlands being destroyed and confiscated, and people being forced to evacuate their homes. Since the beginning of the year, Palestinians have been subjected to excessive violence, suppression and terror by both illegal Israeli settlers and armed forces. These horrific acts are part of a larger pattern of systematic violation of fundamental human rights of Palestinian people by the Israeli regime. They represent a clear violation of international law and established principles and norms of human rights. Mr. President, Excellencies, we are deeply concerned by the repeated assaults and incursion by extremist settlers with support of Israeli occupation forces against the sacred Al-Aqsa Mosque during the holy month of Ramadan. The brutal attack on worshippers, including women and children, as they performed their prayers and ritual in the courtyards of Al-Aqsa Mosque are reprehensible and must be condemned in the strongest possible terms. These Atrocious crimes are a clear example of the Israeli regime illegal and apartheid actions, which exacerbated the suffering of the Palestinian people and eroded the foundations for the establishment of just and sustainable peace in the region. It is regrettable that the Security Council has remained silent, rendering UN resolution ineffective 
and leaving the Palestinian people to suffer ongoing atrocities. The absence of accountability has emboldened this despicable regime to continue violating all UN resolutions, including those adopted by the Security Council. Mr. President, we remain steadfast in our belief that the conflict in Palestine can only be resolved through ending the occupation and recognizing the inalienable rights of the self-determination of the Palestinian people. This requires the full restoration and protection of these rights, leading to the establishment of Palestinian sovereignty over entire Palestine. However, such a resolution cannot be achieved if the Security Council fails to act. We call on the Security Council to fulfill its responsibility to take decisive action to bring an end to the occupation and ensure the protection of the rights of Palestinian people. My sympathy is no longer sufficient. Mr. President, the Islamic Republic of Iran regards it as its duty to support Palestinian legitimate rights to resistance to the oppression and aggression of this apartheid regime in the line with the right of self-determination, and this will be our principal policy until the occupation ends. In conclusion, Mr. President, I wish to emphasize the importance uh, and legal nature of the advisory opinion currently under consideration by the International Court of Justice. The General Assembly adopted Resolution 77-24 seven calling for this opinion to address the legal consequences of Israeli ongoing violations of the Palestinian people's right to self-determination through prolonged occupation, settlement, and annexation of Palestinian territory. We hope that the court's submission will shed more light to ongoing atrocities and violations contribute to the end of the occupation and facilitate holding those responsible for atrocities and violations against the Palestinian people accountable for their actions. Mr. President, once again, the representative of the Israeli regime abused this chamber and resorted to lies and fabrication to make unfounded claims against my country. It is not surprising or unexpected, given that the deception and lies have long been part of this regime's toolbox. The purpose is clear, to divert attention away from the urgent matter to today's meeting agenda item, the atrocity crimes committed by this apartheid regime against the Palestinian people. Therefore, such false and unfounded claims don't merit a response. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the Islamic Republic of Iran for that statement, and I give the floor to His Excellency, Mr. Olaf Skog, Head of the Delegation of the European Union to the United Nations. Thank you, President. Um, I want to uh, express our appreciation to the briefing earlier today from the Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process and acknowledge the presence of Minister Malki here and, and regret the fact that the other side has left the room uh, in, in, um, and not listening to this debate. Candidate countries, uh, I, I, President, I speak on behalf of the EU and its 27 member states, and the candidate countries, North Macedonia, Montenegro, Albania, the Republic of Moldova and Bosnia-Herzegovina, as well as San Marino, align themselves with this statement. President, the European Union and its member states are deeply concerned by the increasing violence and extremism in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territory, which are leading to appalling numbers of Israeli and Palestinian victims, including children. We continue to call on Israeli and Palestinian leaders to de-escalate the situation and to refrain from actions that will increase tension. We commend the efforts of the US, Jordan, Egypt and UNSCO to de-escalate and support commitments taken by the parties in Aqaba and Sharm el-Sheikh. All parties should observe in good faith these commitments. This upsurge in violence followed days of tension and clashes at the holy sites. The EU condemns the violent incidents which have happened in the holy sites, recalls that the use of force must be proportional and calls for upholding the status quo put in place in 1967 for the Temple Mount Al-Haram Al-Sharif in line with previous understandings and with respect to Jordan's special role. 
underlining the necessity to respect the status quo also for the Christian holy sites, which are under increasing pressure. The EU reiterates the importance of maintaining peaceful coexistence of all the three monotheistic religions. The EU condemns the indiscriminate rocket attacks on Israel from Gaza and the territories of Lebanon and Syria. We firmly condemn recent terror attacks in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territory, as well as all forms of terrorism de uh, and deplores uh, the tragic loss of lives, including that of European citizens. And we remain committed to Israel's security in the prevention of and fight against terrorism and violent extremism. There must be an immediate end to terror attacks, which should be condemned by everyone and to practices that support, uh, uh, in practices that support them. In line with the EU's commitment to implement Security Council Resolution 2334 and recalling that settlements are illegal under international law, constitute an obstacle to peace and threaten to make a two-state solution impossible, the EU reiterates a strong opposition to Israel's settlement policy and actions taken in this context. We also condemn indiscriminate violence by Israeli settlers against Palestinian civilians, including destruction of homes and properties. Israel must stop settlement expansion and legalization, prevent settler violence, and ensure the perpetrators are held accountable. The EU will not recognize changes to the 1967 lines unless agreed by the parties. Military operations must be proportionate and in line with international humanitarian law. The humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip requires further easing of restrictions while addressing Israel's legitimate security concerns. The EU reaffirms its commitment to a just and comprehensive resolution of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict based on the two-state solution with the State of Israel and an independent, democratic, contiguous, sovereign and viable State of Palestine living side by side in peace and security and mutual recognition and with Jerusalem serving as the future capital of both states. It is vital to restore a political horizon towards a two-state solution. Only a negotiated agreement offers a chance of security and peace for all. On February 13, the High Representative and Vice President, Saudi Foreign Minister Prince Faisal and Arab League Secretary General Abul Ghait agreed to explore ways to revive and safeguard the prospect of the two-state solution and to achieve a just, comprehensive and lasting peace. The EU reaffirmed its proposal of an unprecedented package of economic, political and security support in the context of a final status agreement, as endorsed in this Council's conclusions of December 2013. In, sorry, in our Council conclusions of December 13. In this effort, we look forward to working closely with other Arab and international partners. The EU will continue to call upon the Palestinian Authority to hold free, transparent and inclusive national elections without further delay. It urges all Palestinian factions to engage in good faith in the reconciliation process, to adhere to previous agreements, renounce violence and terrorism and recognize Israel's right to exist and to commit to democratic principles, including the rule of law. Democratic Palestinian institutions based on respect for the rule of law and human rights are vital for the Palestinian people and ultimately for the two-state solution. Palestinian civil society must be allowed by all parties to carry out its important task freely, while freedom of expression must be upheld. The EU is proud of its continued support to civil society that contributes to peace efforts and confidence building between Israelis and Palestinians. We call on Israel to refrain from any action that would prevent these organizations from continuing their critical human rights, humanitarian and development work in the occupied Palestinian territory. Anti-terrorism legislation should not be used to undermine civil society and its valuable work and contributions to the pursuit of accountability. In preparation for the next, next ad hoc liaison committee in Brussels on 3 and 4th May, the EU calls for implementation of the commitments made at the previous meetings. Until there is a just, fair, agreed and realistic solution to the refugee issue in accordance with international law, UNRWA remains a cru crucial for providing the necessary protection and essential services for Palestine refugees and supporting peace and stability in the region. The EU will continue to support UNRWA in all its fields of operations, including in East Jerusalem. The EU will closely monitor developments and their implications on the ground and remain ready to contribute further to the protection and the viability of the two-state solution. Mr. President, one word on Syria. 15th of March 2023 marked the 12th anniversary since peaceful protests began throughout Syria. 
peaceful protests that were brutally repressed by the Assad regime, provoking a conflict which continues to this day. Adding to this tragedy, on 6 February 2023, northern Syria and Turkey were struck by devastating earthquakes, further exacerbating the suffering of the Syrian people in the region. The President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, and the Prime Minister of Sweden, Ulf Christensen, co-hosted an international donors conference on 20th of March in Brussels to support the people in Turkey and Syria affected by the earthquakes. 950 million euros in grants were pledged for Syria. Following the earthquake, the European Union has allocated 100 million euros, out of which 75 in humanitarian assistance. The emergency response includes the distribution of food, tents, blankets and medical assistance. The European Union and its member states are the largest donor and have provided 27.4 billion euros to meet the needs arising from the Syrian crisis since 2011, including over 4.8 billion at the 6th Brussels Conference. Syria will continue to be a high priority for us. We will host a 7th Brussels Conference on the future of Syria and the region on 15th of June, preceded by a day of dialogue with civil society, in order both to focus international pressure for a pressure for a political solution to the conflict and to generate pledges of humanitarian support for Syria and in support of Syrian refugees and their host communities in the region. We are looking forward to welcoming the international community to the 7th Brussels Conference and call on your unrelenting generosity and continued support. The European Union remains persuaded that the only path to sustainable peace for Syria is a political solution in line with the Security Council Resolution 2254 with the full, equal and meaningful participation of women and in line with the 2012 Geneva Communique. After more than a decade of conflict, it remains essential that the international community continue to pursue a sustainable and comprehensible political solution in Syria. The EU stands firm in its commitment towards this goal, supporting the continuous efforts of Special Envoy Pedersen to advance on all aspects of Security Council Resolution 2254, including his steps-for-steps -steps approach in furthering the political process and resuming the work of the Constitutional Committee. We reiterate again that no normalization, lifting of sanctions or reconstruction will be possible until the Syrian regime engages in a credible, sustainable and inclusive political transition in the framework of 2254. In light of the recent earthquakes, the EU notes the humanitarian exemptions in place for UN sanctions within the framework of Security Council Resolution 2664. Accountability and justice for victims is essential for a stable, peaceful Syria. All parties responsible for breaches of international humanitarian law and violations and abuse of human rights, including sexual and gender-based violence, must be held accountable. We reiterate our call to, to have the situation in Syria referred to the International Criminal Court. In the absence of international processes for justice, the prosecution of war crimes and other serious crimes under national jurisdiction, where possible, now underway in several EU member states, represent a crucial contribution towards securing justice, as does the Dutch-Canadian initiative to hold Syria to account for breaching the UN Convention Against Torture. We will continue to support efforts to gather evidence with a view to future legal action, including by the international impartial and independent mechanism for Syria and the work of the Commission of Inquiry. The EU commends Syria's neighboring countries for hosting large numbers of refugees for more than a decade. We recall that the underlying causes of the refugee and displacement crisis must be addressed under Security Council Resolution 2254. We continue to warn against any further displacements in any part of Syria, as well as against the potential exploitation of such dis displacements for the purpose of social and democratic engineering. Syrian refugees in neighboring countries are still unable to go back home as the conditions for safe, dignified and voluntary return in line with the parameters defined by UNHCR and in accordance with international law are not fulfilled. It is the responsibility of the Syrian regime to remove these obstacles and we will only be in a position to support returns once these conditions are satisfied. As we have reiterated numerous times, the Syrian regime must fully cooperate with the OPCW and its investigations on the use of chemical weapons in the conflict, including the attack in Douma, as well as on the completion of the dismantling of the chemical weapons program. The EU, as a member of the International Partnership Against Impunity for the Use of Chemical Weapons, will continue to work towards ensuring full accountability. 
Mr. President, the European Union has welcomed the unanimous adoption of Security Council Resolution 2672, mandating the continuation of UN cross-border assistance to Syria. Uninterrupted delivery of UN cross-border humanitarian assistance remain vital for Syria's living in, Syrians living in northwest uh, Syria, and the EU will continue to advocate for all parties to depoliticize and allow unimpeded and continued delivery of humanitarian aid to all those in need. The EU noted the UN broker deal to secure the opening of additional border crossings in the aftermath of the February earthquakes, and we call for the continued use of all possible measures that secure the delivery of aid to all those in need in Syria. Civilians must be protected at all times. The EU echoes the calls made by the Security Council for the implementation of a nationwide ceasefire. Turkey's security concerns stemming from northern Syria need to be addressed through political and diplomatic means and in full respect for international humanitarian law. Early recovery projects are important to support resilience, community capacity building and self-reliance of the Syrian people and for their future. EU-funded projects are intended and designed for those in genuine need and to strengthen the sustainability and cost-effectiveness of the humanitarian response. The EU will not fund early recovery efforts that could support social and demographic engineering. As reiterated in the interactive dialogue on missing persons on 28th of March with the Secretary General and the High Commissioner for Human Rights, the European Union supports the establishment through the General Assembly at the earliest opportunity of an independent mechanism to clarify the fate and whereabouts of missing persons in the Syrian Arab Republic and to provide adequate support to victims, families and survivors of those missing. The objective of this endeavor is humanitarian, to alleviate the pain and suffering of families whose lives have been in suspense for all the time that their loved ones have been missing. The EU welcomes the ongoing work of the other actors on this issue, including Syrian civil society, the ICMP, ICRC and the OH. Uh, CHR and emphasizes the need for enhanced cooperation and we're looking forward to en engaging in cost constructively in the upcoming discussions to establish the new mechanism. Finally, let me reiterate again the EU remains committed to the unity, sovereignty and territorial integrity of the Syrian state and will continue to call on all parties to the conflict, particularly the Syrian re regime and its allies, to advance a credible, sustainable and inclusive political solution based on the full and comprehensive implementation of Security Council Resolution 2254 as the only route to sustainable peace in Syria and the way for Syria to become once again the united, sovereign, prosperous and free country we all want to see. I thank you. I thank Mr. Skoog for his statement. I now give the floor to the representative of Vietnam. Mr. President. Vietnam is deeply concerned over the escalating violence in the West Bank and Israel, as highlighted by the special coordinator in his briefing. If this disturbing trend continues, this would be the deadliest year since 2005. We therefore urge all parties to exercise utmost restraint, maintain the status quo at the holy sites in Jerusalem, and avoid unilateral measures and provocations. We are also deeply troubled by the intensified settlement activities, seizures, and demolitions of Palestinian-owned structures. We urge the international community to address the ongoing forced evictions and displacement of Palestinians in East Jerusalem and work towards preventing further escalation of conflicts. In addition, it is important to maintain access to essential services for Palestinian refugees as well as ensure safety during religious events and ceremonies. Mr. President, the prolonged deprivations of the Palestinian people's inalienable rights, such as self-determination and independence, is unacceptable. And the international communities in action on these issues is regrettable. The consensus on a just, comprehensive, and sustainable so solutions to the conflict is unquestionable, and we believe that multilateral political and diplomatic tools are available to that end. In this regard, we acknowledge the recent meetings held among senior officers from Israel, the Palestinian Authority, the United States, Egypt, and Jordan in Salman Sheikh and Aqaba. While these discussions have led to agreements on curbing violence and improving economic conditions for Palestinians, 
the need to directly tackle the critical issues such as settler violence and demolitions. In the long term, there's no alternative to the two-state solution with the establishment of the state of the Palestine that peacefully coexists alongside the state of Israel, with Israel, East Jerusalem as its capital and secure and internationally recognized borders based on the pre-1967 lines and negotiated settlements. The Security Council's Resolution 2334 outlines the essential requirements and parameters for achieving this outcome. The international community should enhance its support for the resumption of meaningful dialogues between Israelis and Palestinians. Vietnam reiterates its call upon all parties to commit to the peace process, abstain from, from violence, and respect international law. We urge relevant stakeholders, especially the cartel, to develop specific and urgent plans to advance the Middle East peace process. Lastly, concerning the other tensions in the region, we commend the diplomatic efforts to contain hostilities and prevent escalation along Le Lebanon's southern border. We call on all parties involved to engage in the constructive dialogue and cooperation to promote peace and stability in the region. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Vietnam for that statement. And I give the floor to the representative of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Allow me to begin by expressing our thanks for the convening of this quarterly open debate. We also express our thanks for the briefing by the United Nations Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process. And we're grateful for the update provided by the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the State of Palestine, and we convey our respects. My delegation aligns itself with the statement delivered by the Republic of Azerbaijan on behalf of the Non-Aligned Movement. Mr. President, once again, we are meeting in the same room to address one of the most painful conflicts facing humanity for more than 75 years. Over this time, without almost anything being done, the suffering of an entire people has been prolonged. But this people has not tired and will never tire of demanding their due rights, the inalienable right to exist, the inalienable right to return to their home, the inalienable right to live in a free, independent, and sovereign state of Palestine. These inalienable rights, however, are trampled day after day by the occupying power. And this occupying power, in light of the inaction of the international community, and particularly in light of the passivity of this Security Council, continues, among other things, to forge ahead with its settlement building and uh, occupation policy, its apartheid policies, as well as uh, its war crimes and crimes against humanity. This this is a reality which is the result of a context of impunity perpetrated over time by the most reliable, faithful protector of the Israeli regime, which is at the same time a permanent member of this important body, which as a body is mandated with maintaining international peace and security. In this context, it's worth recalling that just yesterday we were celebrating the International Day for Multilateralism and Diplomacy for Peace. This is an initiative that was presented and spearheaded by my country in the General Assembly in 2018. At that time, the resolution which established that establishes that day wasn't able to be adopted by consensus in light of the decision of the United States to call for an unexpected vote. The resolution was, however, adopted by the overwhelming majority against just two votes against the votes of Israel and the United States. This is a reality that was in no way surprising to us. That's because the resolution was fully incompatible with their positions, their principles, and their actions. They have historically, indeed, been enemies of multilateralism, of diplomacy, not to mention of peace. Mr. President, 
Over the past few months, we had hoped that the recent meetings in Aqaba and Sharm el-Sheikh would lay the foundations for the resumption without further delay of a necessary political dialogue and of credible, serious and direct negotiations between the sides. However, Israel chose to deny the opportunity for peace once again. This has been shown in the images that have been seen around the world in recent days when the occupying forces once again stained this month of April, April without regard for the important dates uh, for the Muslim, Jewish and Christian faith in that time. This through indiscriminate clashes against worshippers and the civilian population in general at the doors of holy temples in flagrant violations of their holiness and of the status quo. It's clear that the situation on the ground can, has in no way improved since the last time we met, and it continues to worsen day after day. This is confirmed in the reports issued by the UN system. They note that the occupying power has absolutely no intention to bring an end to occupation, that its policies are geared towards taking over complete control of the occupied Palestinian territory even attempting to change the demographic situation. They confirm that 2022 was one of the most deadly years for the Palestinian people since 2005. They further confirm that the first quarter of this year, 2023, saw a number of Palestinians um, that was murdered by Israeli forces that is four times higher than that number in 2022. The barbarity and brutality of the aggressive Israeli forces continues unabated. The human rights of the Palestinian people continue to be violated systematically and with full impunity. The Palestinian people continues to receive indiscriminate discriminatory treatment on their own land. Arbitrary arrests and detentions of innocent civilians and Palestinian journalists continues. The criminalization and detention of human rights defenders and persecutions of Palestinian civil society organizations also continues. The annexation of Palestinian land settlement building, the evictions policy and the demolition of Palestinian homes continues unchanged. The inflammatory rhetoric that fuels fanatic, fanatical groups and that fosters inter alia the commission of hate crimes and attacks on religious sites by settlers and Israeli security forces also continue, as do the situations of collective punishment such as in the Gaza Strip. Mr. President, well, the outlook is definitively not very encouraging. And even though some would prefer not to say this publicly, this is a reality grounded on probable facts that represents a flagrant, systematic, and grotesque violation of the precepts contained in the United Nations Charter and of the most basic norms of international law. Perhaps this is the best example for why the rules-based order should be dismantled, this rules-based order that the United States and its allies so boast and attempt to impose. This is an order based on exceptionalism, unilateralism, supremacy, double standards, and accommodating interpretations, accommodating of their own international obligations. These questions, these issues are in no way aligned with the founding charter of our organizations uh, of our organization the only accepted rules the rules accepted by the whole of the international community for their own conduct and their own relations from this rostrum, we call for an end to be brought to the prevailing cycle of impunity that for years has only emboldened Israel to continue with its crimes. We call for those responsible for so much pain and suffering to be brought to justice. We call for international protection to be provided to the Palestinian people. We call for a guarantee for respect of the UN Charter and the full implementation of all resolutions adopted by this Security Council. We call for an end to be brought to any unilateral measure or act which has the potential to escalate tensions or to destroy a political outcome and to further prolong the conflict. The Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, for its part, will continue to steadfastly support all international efforts aimed at achieving a fair, comprehensive, lasting peace to the Palestinian question on the basis of the two-state solution living side by side in peace and security. 
It is time for the Palestinian people to live and not uh, just to coexist or merely to survive on its ancestral land that is today illegally and uh, occupied illegally and by force by Israel. It's time for the promise for peace, justice and freedom contained in the UN Charter to be a reality for this heroic people demanding their inalienable right to self-determination and to the achievement of their legitimate national aspirations in their free, independent, sovereign state of Palestine behind 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as their capital and as a fully-fledged member of our organization. Mr. President, finally, we wish to conclude our statement recognizing the most important recent uh, progress in some Middle East dynamics. This includes the normalization of dipl diplomatic relations between the Islamic Republic of Iran and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the regularization of rela diplomatic relations between the Syrian Arab Republic and some members of the region. We hope that these positive developments will extend to Israel and Palestine. We're sure that that would positively impact the calls for peace and justice of all peoples from the Middle East, including the noble Palestinian people. And we call for the withdrawal of Israel from the Syrian Golan and from all Arab territories that are illegally occupied. Thank you. I thank the representative of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela for that statement, and I give the floor to the representative of Bangladesh. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to commend the presidency of Russian Federation for their leadership in the work of the Council in April 2023 and convening this very timely debate. We thank Foreign Minister Lavrov for chairing the session in the morning, and we welcome Foreign Minister Riyad al Maliki of Palestine to the meeting. I also thank the Special Coordinator Wenisland for his comprehensive briefing. Mr. President, once again, with deep regret, we mention that the Israeli occupation forces has continuously been carrying out the pattern of killing and destruction in the occupied Palestinian territory. Israel has consistently been subverting international laws and international justice through its illegal practices, policies and practices to establish its illegal occupation of the Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem. The most protracted denial of the collective and individual rights is still underway in Palestine, including the longest isolation of an independent territory, the Gaza Strip, which has been under a nearly 16-year-long blockade. Moreover, since the start of 2023, Israel has increased its military operations inside the occupied Palestinian territory. We strongly condemn the heinous attack in Nablus in February 2023 and constant attacks, killing, ethnic cleansing, and forcible transfer of Palestinians from their own land, most of which were done in broad daylight under the watch of this August Council. We deeply abhor the raid by Israeli occupying forces inside the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound on 4th April 2023 during the holy month of Ramadan, which resulted in hundreds of Palestinian worshippers beaten injured, humiliated, and detained, while also causing damage to the building of the Al-Qibli Mosque. We are also deeply concerned at the continuous violation of historic and legal status quo at the holy sites in Jerusalem. Mr. President, the international community has been regularly condemning all these illegal activities of Israel and urging them to become respectful to the international human rights and humanitarian law and the decision of the United Nations. Unfortunately, condemnation and calls of the United Nations are not heeded. Israel has been showing no respect for the decisions of the Security Council and completely ignoring international communities' legitimate call to implement the two-state solution. Against this backdrop, I would like to highlight the following. First, I refer to the presidential statement of Security Council of 20 February 2023 where the Council expressed deep concern and dismay at Israel's declaration on February 2023, announcing further construction and expansion of settlements and the legalization of settlement outposts. 
We once again urge the Security Council to take immediate and concrete steps as the price for continuous inaction will certainly be higher. Second, we cannot overemphasize the need for ensuring accountability and justice for Israeli atrocities and human rights violations to end the culture of entrenched impunity. In this regard, we welcome the General Assembly's call in its resolution 77-247 for an ICJ advisor opinion on the legal status of Israel's occupation of the Palestinian territory and the consequences arising out of it. Third, we are concerned that nearly 5,000 Palestinians, including 31 women and 170 children, are currently being arbitrarily and illegally imprisoned in Israeli jails and detention centers, and that they are subjected to the most inhuman treatment. We echo the call of Palestine for the release of all Palestinians being held captive by the Israeli occupying forces. Fourth, till the establishment of an independent, viable, and sovereign Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital under a two-state solution based on the pre-1967 borders, we urge the international community to ensure protection of the Palestinians in their own land and provide necessary humanitarian assistance. Finally, we urge the Security Council to implement all its resolutions, including Resolution 2334 of 2016. I reiterate Bangladesh's unwavering and steadfast support to the legitimate aspiration of our Palestinian brothers and sister. I, sisters. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Bangladesh for that statement, and I give the floor to the representative of South Africa. Thank you, Mr. President. We thank you for convening this quarterly debate and also thank the special coordinator, Venezuelan, for his briefing. South Africa aligns itself with the statement of the non-aligned movement. Mr. President, South Africa is deeply concerned by the continuing levels of violence and grave attacks directed against Palestinians in recent months by Israeli settlers and Israeli occupation forces in the occupied Palestinian territory. The provocative rhetoric and brutality directed at Palestinians incites a vicious cycle of violence, resulting in intimidation and inflammatory actions. And this endemic cycle of violence must be stopped. And the drivers of this conflict must be addressed for peace to prevail. We are therefore perturbed by the fact that those who are legally obligated to serve and protect are the initiators of inciting harm and stoking the flames of provocation. As the occupying power, Israeli must abide by its obligations to ensure the protection, security, and welfare of Palestinian civilians living under its occupation in terms of international human rights and humanitarian law. We are appalled and have noted with grave concern the recent assault by Israeli occupation forces on Palestinian worshippers earlier this month at the Al-Aqsa Mosque during the holy month of Ramadan and the illegal restrictions on worshippers paying praying at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre during Easter. We condemn these violent and illegal acts by the Israeli government and wish to state that these actions threaten the internationally agreed status quo in relation to the Jerusalem and its sacred sites. The ubiquity of these attacks and the Israeli military's participation in this violence has deepened the atmosphere, of, the atmosphere of fear and coercion. South Africa strongly condemns every act of violence and the violation of religious freedom. The actions we have witnessed since the beginning of this year in the occupied Palestinian territory do not provide an environment that is conducive to peace. Instead, it detracts from a just settlement based on a two-state solution. Israel's decision to continue with its settlement agenda in the Northwest Bank is of grave concern. Settlements are illegal under international law, 
and Israel's continuous disregard of international law, the UN Charter, and Security Council resolutions must be addressed by this august body. So the President, South Africa maintains that the selective application of international law undermines the effectiveness of collective responses to global security threats. As the body entrusted to maintain international peace, the Security Council must strengthen and uphold its responsibility to ensure accountability when international law has been violated. Israel must be held accountable for the structural violence and suffering its occupation inflicts on Palestinians. It therefore remains pivotal that the decisions and resolutions of this body be enforced. We are therefore encouraged by the decision of the UN General Assembly to request an advisory opinion from the ICJ on Israel practices affecting the human rights of the Palestinian people in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem. As the international community, we have the responsibility to work tirelessly towards supporting and calling for the immediate and unconditional end to Israel's illegal occupation of Palestine. South Africa remains committed to this just cause and to promote efforts that will result in the establishment of a two-state solution where Palestinians and Israelis can live side by side in peace. I thank you. Yeah. I thank the representative of South Africa for that statement. And I give the floor to the representative of Peru. Thank you very much, Mr. President. The heightening tensions, um, systematic violence, and the worsening of the situation in East Jerusalem and in several cities in the West Bank continues to be a source of great concern for the international community. The already very frequent uh, escalations of hostilities, demolitions, forced displacements, uh, expansions of settlements, and the worsening of the situation of the Palestinian refugees persist, as has has been noted over the last few weeks, we have seen acts of violence, illegitimate restrictions, and the widespread, indiscriminate, and unnecessary use of force at Haram al-Sharif in East Jerusalem. Just during the holy month of Ramadan, during which a high number of Muslim worshippers was congregating at the mosque to pray, uh, leading to uh, violent displacements uh, of Muslim worshippers by Israeli police. The launching of rockets on Israel in response should also be firmly rejected because it only first serves to fuel violence. Peru condemns all acts of violence against civilians, including acts of terrorism, wherever they may come from. Against this backdrop, however unpredictable it may be and in which we see unceasing provocations, it is crucial to uh, make decisive efforts to ease the current situation and, above all, to relaunch the peace process through direct negotiations between Israel and Palestine with the participation of the Quartet and international mediators. We regret any acts that violate Security Council resolutions and the historic and legal, legal status quo of Jerusalem and its holy sites. The Peruvian government joins in the call of the international community for full respect of the status, the his, historic and legal status quo of the Christian and Muslim holy sites in Jerusalem. It is crucial that the powers and prerogatives uh, and access to the holy sites uh, be respected, these uh, prerogatives granted by international law to the Kingdom of Jordan. Jerusalem is the center of spiritual convergence of the three monotheistic religions and its situation as a universal meeting point for religious uh, freedom and inter-religiousness must be respected. The holy sites cannot be scenes for of violence or for the indiscriminate and illegitimate use of force by any side. President, Peru in 1947 was a member and vice chair of the Special Committee on Palestine that 
suggested the creation of two states, Palestine and Israel. In line with this historic position, supported by the full implementation of Resolution 2334-2016, this resolution demands uh, the end of any settlement building activity and a fair, lasting solution for the coexistence of two states within safe and internationally recognized borders on the basis of the 1967 borders in line with relevant United Nations resolutions. To that end, we reiterate that it is crucial to support the mediatory efforts of the Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process, Tor Wenesland. It's also important to support the realistic, comprehensive uh, approach to the peace process in the Middle East, the main aim of which must be to persuade the parties to be flexible in their positions and to sit around the negotiating table to transparently address their differences and to begin to seek areas of convergence uh, in line with the principles of the United Nations Charter and international law. Thank you. I thank the representative of Peru for that statement, and I give the floor to the representative of Indonesia. Mr. President, Indonesia thanked the Russian Federation for convening this open debate. We thank the Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process for the briefing. Today, we live with the fact that a large number of Palestinian people are living in catastrophic conditions. UN OCHA has reported that 21 million Palestinians across the occupied ter Palestinian territory are in need of great humanitarian assistance. Since January, more than 100 Palestinians have been killed by the occupying forces. Many of them are children. Sadly, 2023 might still witness an even bloodier year than 2022. In this chamber, we speak loudly of respecting principles of human rights, equal rights, freedom of worship, and international law. Yet, we often stand idle when the occupying power implements apartheid-like policies or brutally beat up worshippers during Ramadan prayers, or violating various international laws and Security Council resolutions. Every day, innocent Palestinians pay the price for inaction of the international community. What message are we sending to the innocent Palestinian women and children? Mr. President, the international community in action risk being seen by innocent women and children in Palestine as double standard when it comes to their lives. Even worse, if we continue failing to act, we may inadvertently create a the Palestinian people's rights to self-determination and to build their independent state contiguously with Jerusalem as its capital. The aim here is not only to talk about our astonishment and disgust with the uh, flagrant violation of uh, Palestinian rights, but also to urge the Security Council to uh, uphold its responsibility to implement the 2016 Resolution 2334 that calls for an end to all settlement activity and for an upholding of the two-state solution. The occupying power needs to refrain from all illegitimate unilateral measures that are provocative. This authority, however, is continuing to make cowardly violations. There is the expansion of settlement activity, the murder of innocent people, the invasions of Palestinian towns and villages, and the confiscation of territory and property, as well as the destruction of houses and the expulsion of their inhabitants, including in East Jerusalem, and also the desecration of Haram al-Sharif and the al Asqa Mosque. Aqsa Mosque. The, uh, the, the crimes being committed by the Israeli occupying army. 
these are the causes of the conflict that is ongoing in the Middle East. All those who are convinced of the need to stop the bloodshed are convinced of this and to adopt solutions to enable everybody to live in dignity. We, on behalf of the Iraqi and government and people, we reject the desecration of the al Aska mocks. Uh, this is at the heart of occupied Palestine. We are talking about a barbaric invasion. There were worshippers who were withdrawing. They were unarmed. They were leaving the mosque, and this is during the holy month of Ramadan. We reiterate the importance of upholding the legal status quo. This is a historic status quo and the need not to manipulate a legal precedent. I thank the representative of Iraq for that statement, and I give the floor to the representative of the Syrian Arab Republic. Shukran, Sayyid Rais. Sayyid Rais, لقد كلفني السيد وزير. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I was assigned by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriates of the Syrian Arab Republic. He entrusted me with making this statement on his behalf as he was unable to attend this meeting due to the difficulty of travel resulting from the unilateral coercive measures imposed on Syria. Mr. President, at the outset, I would like to thank His Excellency Mr. Sergei Lavrov, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation and his delegation for convening this important meeting on the situation in the Middle East. The Russian Federation has always stood in solidarity with people suffering from colonization and injustice. The uh, delegation of the Arab Republic of Syria aligns itself with Azerbaijan's statement on behalf of the non-aligned movement. Mr. President, a few days ago, the holy month of Ramadan came to an end. This holy month witnesses every year a new criminal escalation on the part of Israel as well as aggressive practices against the Palestinian people that put all humanity to shame. Unfortunately, the Security Council stands as witness to those crimes against humanity without lifting a finger. Or maybe it is not allowed to do so, given the umbrella of immunity and unlimited support for Israel provided by some of the permanent members of the Security Council, and which are known to all. The Syrian Arab Republic condemns with the strongest terms the attacks of the Israeli occupation forces against worshippers in Al-Aqsa Mosque and the desecration by Israel of the Holy Sanctuary. And we do deplore the continued international silence regarding the crimes of the Israeli occupation that aim to ignite the region and shove it into higher levels of tension and instability. Syria holds the Israeli occupation authorities and their supporters fully responsible for this escalation and the repercussions thereof. And we call upon the United Nations to condemn those violations and to stop them and to ensure that they are not to be repeated. Also, we call that Israel has to be compelled to implement the resolutions of international legitimacy related to the Palestinian people and to enable the Palestinian people to enjoy their legitimate and inalienable national rights. It has become clear that the recurrent political crises inside Israel compel its failed leaders to export the internal crisis by launching attacks against the defenseless Palestinian people and by committing acts of aggression against Syria and its people, as well as the people of southern Lebanon, in which underscores, underscores the approach of the law of force and the jungle. And this has been the signature of Israel's behavior since 1948 until this very moment. Mr. President, it's unfortunate that the question of Palestine and its people who are suffering daily for decades, the most heinous crimes has become a routine matter without any tangible effort to compel the occupying power to stop its multifaceted aggression and to hold it accountable for its actions. It's more unfortunate and deplorable that some treat the killer and the victim equally. They treat the occupying power and the defenseless people subject to this occupation equally. 
This defenseless people who are deprived of their most basic rights, such as the right to life, though then both sides are required to exercise maximum restraint. Israel, the occupying power, was and still is the only reason behind the emergence and continuation of the plight and tragedy of the Palestinian people. As it has expelled Palestinians from their homes under the weight of killing, massacres, intimidation, forced displacement, confiscation of property, and home demolitions, and turned them into refugees for decades. The responsibility for the Palestinian refugee question is an international, political, legal, and moral responsibility before being a mere humanitarian or service responsibility. The Syrian Arab Republic stresses that the continuation of the work of UNRWA and its support to Palestinian refugees is indispensable, especially in light of the continued Israeli occupation of the occupied Palestinian territories. And we do stress the importance of UNRWA's continuing to fulfill its mandate and secure the necessary funding for its budget from the United Nations, as well as the contributions of donor countries adequately and sustainably. Mr. President, the crimes perpetrated by the Israeli occupation in Palestinian territories are inseparable from the practices of this entity in the occupied Syrian Arab Golan since 1967, which is evident in the continuation by Israel, the occupying power in the Syrian Golan, for more than five decades, its aggressive policies against Syrian people and its practice of the most heinous violations of international law and international humanitarian law, including arrest, killing, and displacement of Syrians. Also, this is reflected in Israel's systematic expansionist settlement policy in the occupied Golan with the aim of perpetuating the occupation and increasing the number of settlers, thus imposing demographic uh, change as well as stealing the natural resources, confiscating lands and establishing projects on those lands that cause catastrophic effects on the lives of Syrians in the Golan. In addition to the foregoing, the Israeli occupation forces use the occupied Syrian Golan as a platform to launch repeated attacks on the sovereignty of the Syrian lands by bombing and carrying out assassinations of innocent civilians and targeting Syrian infrastructure. The Israeli occupation forces launched consecutive attacks last March and this April, targeting areas in and around Damascus as well as Homs and its countryside that caused the death of innocent civilians, the injury of others, as well as material damage. On the 22nd of last March, Israel once again targeted Aleppo International Civil Airport, which led it being out of service and thus halted the United Nations air transport services and the delivery of humanitarian aid to those affected by the earthquake that hit Syria on February 6th as this airport was a gateway for the delivery of humanitarian aid. The fact that Israel launched this terrorist aggression in conjunction with the visits of UN officials to Syria to follow up efforts made to alleviate the difficult humanitarian conditions the country is going through after years of war and the devastating earthquake is not strange for a terrorist entity whose suspicious origin coincided with the assassinations of UN officials and peace mediators. The Syrian Arab Republic once again warns Israel and its sponsors of the dangers of these aggressive policies that push the region towards a comprehensive escalation and a new phase of insecurity and instability. Also, we call upon the Security Council to abandon and forgo its silence and to urgently shoulder its responsibility to end the Israeli occupation of Arab territories and to implement relevant United Nations resolutions especially Security Council Resolutions 242 and 338, as well as Resolution 497, which considers Israel's decision to annex the Golan Heights null and void and with no legal effect. Mr. President, before concluding, I would like 
to point out that the European Union delegation usually uses this meeting on the situation in the Middle East to raise issues related to the situation in Syria that are totally irrelated to the topic of the meeting in an open attempt to divert attention from discussing the crimes committed by Israel in the region. This also proves their adherence to unrealistic policies that have become anachronistic and are overtaken by developments and events where Syria needs concerted international efforts to help it overcome the negative repercussions resulting from the erroneous policies pursued by their countries for more than 10 years, especially by mercilessly imposing, along with the United States of America, unilateral, immoral, and inhumane sanctions on the Syrian people. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the Syrian Arab Republic for that statement. I now give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Sheikh Niang, Chair of the Committee on the Exercise of the Inalienable Rights of the Palestinian People. Mr. President, the Committee on the Exercise of the Inalienable Rights of the Palestinian People welcomes His Excellency Mr. Sergei Lavrov. Russian Federation Foreign Minister and congratulates the Russian Federation for its able presidency of the Security Council this month. I thank the Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process, Mr. Tor Wensland, for his briefing and tireless efforts. Mr. President, as mandated by the General Assembly on 15 May, the committee will commemorate the 75th anniversary of the Nagba which will serve as a reminder of the historic injustice suffered by the Palestinian people and the outstanding debt of the international community toward them and the over 5.8 million refugees who are registered with UNRWA. We are also reminded of the ongoing Israeli occupation for nearly 56 years with no end in sight as reflected in the worrying debates in Israel about the possibility of further annexation and colonization of the occupied Palestinian territory. The committee expresses its concern over Israel's passing on the 21st of March of an amendment to the 2005 disengagement law that paves the way for Israel to reestablish the former settlement of Homesh in the West Bank. The committee reiterates its calls for a complete and immediate halt to all settlement activities and reminds Israel that all settlements are illegal, regardless of their status under Israeli law, that these actions further violate Security Council Resolution 2334 of 2016 and severely undermine efforts to find a just solution to the conflict. Mr. President, this year, Ramadan coincided with Passover and Easter. This should have led to peaceful reflection and celebration. Unfortunately, tensions rose when Israel forces entered Al-Aqsa Mosque's Al-Kibli prayer hall in East Jerusalem to demonstrate their power during those holidays. Stun grenades, batons, rifles, and rubber-coated metal bullets were used by Israeli security forces and armed civilians to dislodge Palestinian worshippers, leading to 44 Palestinian and two Israeli police officers injured, in addition to material damage to this holy site. About 440 Palestinians were arrested, later released, but banned from Al-Aqsa for the rest of Ramadan. On the, 20, on the, on the 5th of April 2023, the Committee Bureau issued a statement denouncing the raid, which was seen around the world and drew global condemnation. Additionally, as is customary, Israel imposed restrictions on the attendance of Orthodox Easter on the 16th of April and used excessive force against Christian worshippers citing security concerns. The committee condemns the violence inside the Al-Kibli prayer hall and reminds Israel that the historic status quo of the holy sites must be upheld, respecting the special role 
of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan and the Waqf. The committee strongly condemns the Israeli finance minister's outrageous statements denying the existence of the Palestinian people and calling to wipe out Huwara, a Palestinian village in the occupied West Bank, after extremist settlers went on a rampage, killing one Palestinian and causing widespread destruction to Palestinian property, including dozens of homes in the wake of the killing of two Israelis. The committee urges the Israeli authorities to respect international law, including the Fourth Geneva Conventions and its obligations as the occupying power, including those obligations related to the protection of the civilian population. We call on political, religious, and community leaders on all sides to reject inflammatory rhetoric and provocative actions and refrain from steps that could escalate tensions. The indiscriminate, indiscriminate firing of rockets to the civilian population is also unacceptable and must cease. We welcome the UN Special Coordinator's mediation efforts to de-escalate the situation and urge all parties to work towards reducing tensions. While the international community is preparing to commemorate the Nakba of 1948, Israel continues to entrench its occupation of the Palestinian territory, including its Jerusalem, with relentless establishment of illegal outposts, settlement advancement, seizures and the demolition of hundreds of structures, including donor-funded structures, and displace, displacing 388 people, including 89 women and 197 children. In open defiance to the international community and to appeals from its own friends, Israel advanced plans for over 7,200 7, settlement housing units with approximately 4,000 settlements deep in the occupied West Bank. Israel's occupation uh, actions in the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem, point to what many have described as an ongoing nagba of dispossession and displacement and denial of the rights of the Palestinian people. We, the international community, must not wait any further. In this regard, the committee welcomes the 52nd Human Rights Council resolutions of 4th April 2023 on the question of Palestine, the one on Israeli settlements and the other one on the right of the Palestinian people to self-determination and calls for the implementation. Mr. President, the committee praised the participants to the high-level meetings in Aqaba and hope that those meetings will advance security, stability, and peace as outlined in the joint communique, and we expect for we expect tangible and verifiable actions to address the crisis. The committee reiterates the need for Palestinian unity based on the Algeria Reconciliation Agreement to advance national aspirations and facilitate engagement in resolving the question of Palestine. On behalf of the committee, I want to make a strong appeal to the Security Council to demonstrate leadership by taking action to protect the Palestinian people, protect the, the Palestinian people with measures to ensure the human security in the face of constant aggressions and human rights violations by the occupying power. In this context, the committee also emphasizes its previous call to all member states to support UNRWA's sustainable funding, which is crucial for the well-being and the livelihoods of Palestine refugees and overall regional stability. The committee believes that the just and lasting peace will only be achieved with the end of Israel's occupation, the realization of the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people, including the Palestine refugees, and the achievement of the two-state solution according to international law and past agreements, resulting in the independence of the state of Palestine with East Jerusalem as its capital. I thank you. I thank His Excellency Mr. Nyang for that statement. I now give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Maged Abdelaziz, Permanent Observer of the League of Arab States to the United Nations. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. President, it is a pleasure for me 
to start with greeting the Russian Federation and congratulating it on its exceptional presidency of the Security Council. I would like to wish a warm welcome to Mr. Sergei Lavrov, the Foreign Minister, and also His Excellency Riyad Almaki, Foreign Minister of the State of Palestine, and His Excellency Erafaila al Murufa, Minister of the State of the UA, and all other dignitaries. We align ourselves with the statement made by the Chargé d'Affaires of the Lebanese Republic on behalf of the Arab group. In the Middle East has seen dangerous vast developments, namely ongoing violations by the extremist government of all the rights of the Palestinian people in the occupied territories. The support also given to, by the government to Israeli settlers is something that runs counter to all commitments under IHL and international law and runs counter to Resolution 2334 of 2016. The most serious case or act committed by the occupying power, Israel, during the reporting period, were the most serious incident was the ferocious repeated attacks on the Al-Aqsa Mosque. The most repugnant was the attacks against worshippers, preventing them gaining access to the mosque and to the esplanade. The mosque was desecrated by settlers. They also attacked the Christian holy sites in Jerusalem and in Palestine, occupied Palestinian territories. This was a flagrant violation of the guardianship of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, of the holy sites. The most dangerous thing is that this occurred during the month of Ramadan. This is a time when there are Christian celebrations as well. Uh, Easter Sunday, Sunday, uh, uh, Good Friday, and other uh, commemorations and celebrations. So this is a solemn time throughout the world in the Arab and non-Arab world. The extremist government is has thus uh, affronted the international community. It shows that it has shown rather that it uh, respects no holy place, be this Jewish, Muslim, or Christian. There were demonstrations in Israel, indeed, to protest against the laws that the government wishes to adopt to ensure impunity for some people in the state. The state that, as we heard today, in the statement made by its representative, a state that claims to respect democracy and human rights, that is a gross lie. The Security Council, if it does not oppose these violations, the very credibility of the multilateral international regime will be seriously undermined. This is particularly true because Israel is exploiting the attention that is being focused on Ukraine and uh, other issues and uh, seeking to detract attention. So Israel is seeking to distract the attention of many um, important powers and is seeking influence with the quartet. This is increasing the risk of a third in Palestinian intifada. There are significant political and security implications for this, both for the peoples of Palestine and Israel, and also for the people of the entire region. This would, there, this therefore requires more decisive action from the council. Based on this, the League of Arab States favors an implementation mechanism to protect the Palestinian people. We should not wait to see massacres carried out 
such as that in 1994, and that led the Security Council to adopt Resolution 904, and that sought to set up a protection mechanism for the Palestinian people. It is the Council's responsibility to protect the Palestinian people, whatever Israeli regime is in place and whatever situation is occurring in the world. We would thus urge the Secretary General to adopt a new report urgently, like the report that he presented in 2018. We urge specific proposals to be made as to find the best ways to protect the Palestinian people who are living under occupation from the government and the settlers. This is particularly important for the Council and for the Secretary General. This is because the Israeli government is an extremist one. It is seeking to set up special militia groups that would not fall under the Ministry of the Interior. This uh, is something that undermines the worsening situation and undermines the Security Council processes. Given the deteriorating situation since the beginning of the year, the Ministerial uh, Council of the League of Arab States, whose role it is to oppose illegitimate uh, policies and measures in Jerusalem, this body adopted its declaration or statement on the 5th of January 2023, this ministerial committee threat, talked about the impact of successive violations by the extremist Israeli government. The League of Arab States and its Secretary General is threatening repercussions for these violations that are being uh, carried out in impunity with no punishment. It is insufficient for the Security Council to meet seven times since the beginning of January to discuss these viola violations without there being no consequences. Yeah, of course, the press statements and presidential statements uh, deplore the situation. However, the League of Arab States believes that the Security Council should ensure effective protection for the Palestinian people. This should be enshrined in a resolution that will need to be implemented so that uh, perpetrators can be brought to justice. Furthermore, it is the international community's responsibility to focus attention on the peaceful settlement of the conflict in the region. There needs to be a clear timeline for this settlement through the quartet in order to have an international conference. This is something that the Palestinian president has been calling for since 2018. Direct negotiations need to start on the two state solutions and the land for peace initiatives. The uh, plan that was adopted by the Arab summit in 2002, the Arab peace plan, is something that is crucial, but it, it, is, it serves as a crucial practical basis for the establishment of sustaining peace throughout the entire region. It's crucial for the establishment of an independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital based on the 5th of June 1967 borders. All parties need to cooperate in order to achieve this. The Palestinian issue is at the heart of Arab concerns. D recent developments regarding the situation in the Middle East, we're convinced uh, uh, something that the Security Council is going to look into. What is uh, needed is a progress on the Syrian issue with the assistance of the UN, the speeding up of measures to establish a government in Lebanon, the first uh, step towards a prisoner exchange 
regarding the war in Yemen and steps to achieve a political settlement and also measures taken to hold free elections in Libya by the end of the year. Despite the bloody conflict in our brotherly nation, Sudan, that has an impact on the Sudanese people and its neighboring country, politically and humanitarianly, Regarding this, the League of Arab States is upholding its regional responsibilities. We are working with IGAD and others with the UN support and the support of the EU. And we are working to bring a swift settlement to this conflict. The Secretary General of the League of Arab States was at the forefront of seeking to achieve a ceasefire. A, there was a call for a Sudanese uh, widespread dialogue. Uh, this is to complement uh, the work of the Security Council should complement regional efforts in the context of complementarity and cooperation. The League of Arab States will continue to implement our common agenda proposed by the Secretary General. The aim here is to re-establish the credibility of the international multilateral regime and that of the Security Council. We are convinced that all powers, along with all member states of the organization, will uh, be able to rise above the polarization that we've seen in the Security Council to ensure that the maintenance of international peace and security can be upheld and that we can achieve our joint goals. There will be an Arab summit in Saudi Arabia next month. We're convinced that it will adopt resolutions supporting joint regional steps that it will look at all issues affecting the Arab world and the aim being to ensure the maintenance of international peace and security. I thank His Excellency Mr. Magdad Abdelaziz for his statement. I now give the floor to the representative of Mauritania. Mr. President, Excellency, we align ourselves in Mauritania with the statement made by the Arab group and non-aligned movement. I would like now to deliver this statement on behalf of the member state of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation in my capacity as a chair of OIC group. We have witnessed over the last period a dangerous escalation of crimes and violation perpetrated by the Israeli occupation forces and extremist settlers in the occupied Palestinian territory, particularly in Jerusalem, Nablus, Jenin, and Jericho cities, which resulted in the killing of 96 Palestinian, including children, in addition to hundreds of wounded and arrested citizens since the beginning of this year. Tensions are high and fear is widespread as Israeli provocation and incitement against the Palestinian people, their heritage and presence in their homeland are also escalating and emboldening the violence of the army and settlers' militias. The OIC is particularly concerned about the Israeli occupation forces, repeated assault and incursion by extremist Jewish settlers against the blessed Al-Aqsa Mosque, including during the holy month of Ramadan and brutal attacks on worshippers and those present in its courtyard while performing their prayers and ritual, including women and children. The Israeli occupation forces fired stone grenades and tear gas inside the Aqsa Mosque, causing damage to windows and doors and wounding and arresting hundreds of worshippers. In the same vein, Israeli's illegal, oppressive and destructive policy, which aim to further entrench and perpetuate the longest belligerent occupation in modern history, included through violent military aggression, colonial settlement, 
reconstruction, ethnic cleansing, blockade, displacement, and confiscation of Palestinian land continue to take place relentlessly in flagrant violation of international law and relevant UN resolution. The OIC emphasizes in this regard that the lack of accountability has emboldened Israeli to persist in such illegal policies which are causing Imma suffering to the Palestinian people and are undermining the pillars of the realization of a just and lasting peace. Such continuing flagrant breaches by the Israeli are further deepening the current political impasse and making the achievement of the two-state solution on which an international consensus has, has long been established less probably by the day. We therefore reiterate that the Security Council and all other key actors in the international arena should assume their responsibilities for ensuring accountability, upholding the role of international law and bringing to a halt this illegal acts. Urgent action is needed to preserve the two-state solution and salvage the prospect for peace. A direction of DT will have serious consequences on the ground and for the viability of our international system. Mr. President, the OIC forewarns, in particular of the dire consequences of the continued infringement by the Israeli occupation authority on the sanctity of the blessed Al-Aqsa Mosque, included continuous provocation, abuses, daily brutal assault, incursion, and unprecedented tampering with the existing historical, legal, and religious statute of the blessed Al-Aqsa Mosque as an exclusive place of worship for Muslims. In this regard, the AUC stresses that Israeli the occupied power has no sovereignty over the entire Al-Aqsa compound, Al-Haram Sharif, and Muslim worshippers have the absolute right to pray freely and safely in it at any time and without any hindrance. We reaffirm, therefore, our firm rejection of Israeli measures and attempts to alter the historical and legal statu quo of Al-Aqsa Al compound, Al-Haram Sharif. We caution time and again that this Israeli provocative and irresponsible act hurt the feelings of Muslims across the globe, violate their religious right and eternal attachment to this holy seat and threaten to jeopardize stability in the region and beyond. We underscore that this August body must uphold its responsibility and obligation toward ensuring Israeli compliance with and respect for international law and UN resolution included inter alia Security Council Resolution 2334-2016, 470-C-1980-and 478-1980 in relation with East Jerusalem, the occupied capital of the state of Palestine, which has been enduring endless Israeli attempts to isolation, Judaization, colonization, and subjugation. The OIC commands the continued effort of His Majesty King Mohammed VI, Chairman of the Al-Qadza Committee, in protecting the Islamic holy seats in Al-Qadza Sharif, standing up against the Israeli occupation authority measure aimed at Judaizing the holy seat and praises the concrete law played by Al-Qadza Committee, Bayt al-Mal al quds Sharif Agency, in carrying out development and steadfastness building projects and activity for the inhabitant of Holy City. The OIC also reaffirmed that Al-Ahram Sharif, with its entire area totaling 144 dunams, is an exclusive place of worship for, for Muslim, protected by the international law and the historical and legal statute, and that the Jordanian administration of Jerusalem, Awqaf, and Al-Aqsa Mosque affair is the competent authority to manage the affair of Blazed Aqsa Al-Mosque, Al-Haram Al-Qudsi Sharif, 
and stresses the role of the historian Hashimite custodianship over the Islamic and the Christian holy seats in Al-Quds in protecting sanctities, their identity, and the existing historical and legal status therein. The OIC appreciated the Algerian declaration of the Réunion Conference of Palestinian National Unity to end division and achieve reconciliation as a positive step toward national unity and expresses deep appreciation to the People Democratic Republic of Algeria for sponsoring the talks and appreciated the in-remitting effort made by the President of the Republic of Algeria, Mr. Abdelmajin Taboun, for the success of this historic endeavor. Mr. President, the Israeli extremist government has proven that it is more committed to colonialism and annexation, to oppression and violence than to justice and human rights, to peace and stability. The deliberate escalation of Israeli aggression against Palestinians and the expansion of its illegal colonial settlement on the occupied Palestinian territory, included in and around Jerusalem in particular, constitute wire crimes and flagrant violation of international law. There must be accountable for all these abuses and violation, and there must be protection for the Palestinian people who are defenseless against the ruthless aggression of this 50 years foreign occupation, including the two million trapped under the Israeli blockade in the Gaza Strip. In closing, as we will soon solemnly mark 75 years since the Nakba, the OIC reiterate its call for justice for the Palestinian people, including the Palestinian refugees. The OIC affirms that the establishment of a just and lasting peace in Middle East requires firm and prompt action by the UN Security Council to ensure an end to the Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territory forthwith. Similarly, the international community should uphold its responsibility in enabling the Palestinian people to achieve the right to return and to self-determination and to sovereignty and independence in their state on their territory occupied since 1967 with East Jerusalem at its capital in the line with the relevant UN resolution and the Arab Peace Initiative. Thank you for your attention. I thank the representative of Mauritania for that statement. I now give the floor to the representative of the Maldives. The President, for convening today's debate and to Mr. Toe Vincent for providing his insightful briefing. My delegation aligns with the statement delivered by Azerbaijan permanent representative in his role as chair of non-aligned movement. Mr. President, it is noteworthy that the Council has received for the second time this month an update from Mr. Nixon on the Palestinian question, including regarding the ongoing tension at the Al-Haram al al-Sharif, Israeli forces storm courtyard of Al-Aqsa Mosque between 4th and 5th of April, assaulting worshippers and making multiple arrests and causing injuries to worshippers and destruction of mosques during the holy month of Ramadan. And sadly, this is not the first year this has happened. The government of Mali strongly condemned these highly provocative actions. Our delegation is concerned that these reckless actions undermined effort to achieve a lasting resolution to the conflict, as well as peace and stability <coughs> in the region. Mr. President, we commend the adoption of the presidential statement of 20th February the first council outcome on this agenda item in over eight years, and the first since the adoption of Resolution 2334. However, may I call for crime and de-escalation are insufficient to hold the killing of innocent people. Expression of concern and outrage is not enough to stop settlement activities in occupied territories or the seizure and the demolition of Palestinian-owned structures and land. In February, February in February alone, over 7,000 7, housing units were approved in settlement across the West Bank. 
Israeli action in occupied territory must not be exempt from international and humanitarian law or the authority of Security Council. We firmly believe that the rule of law should apply equal, equally to all countries. It is crucial that these responsible for frequent violation of international law and international humanitarian law be held accountable for the action. This council mandate by the ch Charter to maintain international peace and security must ensure that the all countries respect and up uphold their decision. The government of Maldives reiterates its call for the implementation of Council Resolution 2334, which offers viable path to peace based on the two-state solution, ensuring the fulfillment of Palestinian people's inalienable right, including self-determination and just resolution for Palestinian refugees. The Maldives reiterates its unwavering support to two-state solution with establishment of an independent and sovereign state of Palestine based on the pre-1967 border with East Jerusalem as its capital. Mr. President, we urge the complete lifting of the illegal blockade, which has caused immense humanitarian and social economic suffering for millions of Palestinians, including women and children, for over 56 years. In the absence of just solution, we must find a way to enhance relief assistance to Palestinian people, including the indispensable support for UNRWA, other United Nations agencies and international organizations working on the ground to assist the Palestinian people. <coughs> Mr. President, in 2023, Syrian conflict continues to rage with over 30 years of ongoing civil war. Despite numerous ceasefire attempts, the conflict has resulted in the death of hundreds of people, of pe uh, hundreds of people displacement of millions and destruction of entire cities. The Maldives calls upon this council and the international community to act urgently to find suffering facilitate and suffering and facilitate a resolution to the war torn nation. Mr President, in conclusion, the Maldives reform its commitment to collaborate with the Council and Member States to seek long term resolution in ensuring peace and stability in the Middle East and achieving a just lasting, comprehensive and peaceful resolution to the Palestinian question in all its aspects. I thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, благодарю, благодарю I thank the representative of the Maldives for that statement. I now give the floor to the representative of Saudi Arabia. I thank you, Mr. President, Your Excellencies, Ministers, Permanent Representatives, Delegations, Members of the Security Council, ladies and gentlemen, at the outset, I would like to congratulate uh, the Russian Federation uh, for its presidency of the Security Council. And on behalf of my country's government, I would like to thank uh, them for holding this important session on a topic that uh, captures uh, the attention of the entire world. We also welcome the participation of the Russian Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov, uh, and uh, the Foreign Minister of Palestine, Dr. Riyal al-Maliki. We would also like to uh, thank uh, Mr. Tor Wenesland, uh, the, special, the uh, representative of the, of the Secretary General and the Special Coordinator for the Middle East uh, Peace Process for his briefing, and we value his important efforts in the field. Mr. President, uh, this session is being held uh, while the Palestinian people and uh, the entire region are experiencing a critical conditions as a result of the continued Israeli practices against uh, the unarmed Palestinian people who have for decades been suffering from the Israeli occupation of their territories uh, and uh, its control of uh, their daily lives. The Israeli government, unfortunately, continues uh, its daily aggression on the Palestinian people and their holy shrines and their property, the most recent of which were the provocative actions that we witnessed uh, at the beginning of this month when the soldiers of the Israeli occupying power raided uh, the courtyards of, courtyards of the Al-Aqsa al-Sharif Mosque and attacked worshippers uh, and arrested several Palestinian citizens, uh, which provoked the feelings of Muslims throughout the world. Our country, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, uh, condemned uh, this blatant violation and expressed its flat rejection of these pr uh, practices that undermine peace uh, and go against the principles and norms that require respect for holy shrines. We reiterate our firm position in 
to support all efforts to put an end to the occupation and to arrive at a just and comprehensive solution to the Palestinian cause. These Israeli measures definitely will ultimately lead to undermining the chances for peace in the Middle East and the two-state solution. Everybody knows that a just and comprehensive peace will not be achieved while these aggressive practices continue, especially when we see the continuation of settlement activity and the confiscation of Palestinian land and the eviction of Palestinians from their homes. A just and comprehensive peace will only be, and security will only be achieved through the two-state solution and the establishment of a Palestinian stage that, that is independent and sovereign on the 4 June 1967 lines with East Jerusalem as its capital and in accordance with international resolutions and the resolutions of this esteemed council and the Arab Peace Initiative that was submitted by the Kingdom in 2002. Therefore, Mr. President, we renew our call to the Security Council to shoulder its responsibilities and to ensure the implementation of its resolutions to put an end to all of these illegitimate and provocative unilateral measures that only aim to escalate tensions. We ask for the Security Council to stop the violations that Israel is perpetrating uh, unabated to build and expand its illegitimate settlements. We also uh, demand that uh, the Palestinian presence in, uh, in Jerusalem must uh, no longer be targeted and put a stop to attempts to change the legal and uh, demographic composition and to put an end to uh, the special arrangements that target uh, the Islamic holy shrines we, uh, where Israel attempts to impose its sovereignty on them. We demand uh, protection, international protection, urgently for the Palestinian people in accordance with the proposals by the Secretary General of the United Nations that were welcomed by the General Assembly. We must pressure the Israeli government to immediately rescind the punitive measures that were unilaterally imposed on the Palestinian people and their leadership and civil society uh, in light of the General Assembly's resolution asking for a legal opinion from the ICJ. In closing, we call on the Israeli government uh, to respond to calls for peace uh, and to deal seriously with attempts uh, to resolve the conflict with the Palestinians. There is no doubt that resolving this conflict will be in the interest of the entire region, including Israel. We call on Israel to engage in serious negotiations with good intentions in order to achieve peace on the two-state solution and in a manner that would guarantee stability in the Middle East. We call on it to work on finding a just solution that would guarantee the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people, and we underscore the need to activate the effort of the international community to resolve the longest-lasting conflict in the history of the United Nations and in a manner that would guarantee the legitimate rights of the sister of the Palestinian people in accordance with the principles that the United Nations was founded upon. I thank you, sir. I thank the representative of Saudi Arabia for that, for that statement. I give the floor to the representative of Chile. Thank you, Mr. President. We're grateful for this opportunity to participate in this open debate and to be able to reaffirm the importance that we grant to this issue. In the same context, we are grateful for the, present the briefing by the special coordinator by the Middle for the Middle East peace process uh, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs. We reaffirm that the region needs and deserves peace and that the solution involves fruitful and direct negotiations between Palestine and Israel in order to achieve the uh, solution of two free, autonomous, sovereign and independent states with internationally safe, definitive and mutually recognized borders based on the 1967 borders. We further reaffirm that the decisions and agreements of the United, uh, based on the United, that this should be based on the decisions and agreements of the United Nations, including the resolutions adopted by this very body. All of the aforementioned is underpinned by respect for international law and the United Nations Charter. It involves the Palestinian people enjoying self-determination and forming an independent, internationally recognized state. Likewise, Israel must be able to have safe borders. We wish to express our deep-rooted concern at the recent heightening intentions around the holy sites in Jerusalem and other areas. This has led to violence, injury and death. 
Chile is not indifferent to the worsening security situation which always leads to an increasing number of civilian casualties. Furthermore, as happens in, uh, different, in diff various different settlements and the expansion of these settlements by Israel doesn't foster a fair and lasting peace, nor does it foster decency or security. We call for their expansion and building to be halted. We reiterate that the legal, historic and religious status quo of the holy sites in Jerusalem must be respected. They must continue to be safe areas of worship for Christians, Muslims, and Jews. We call for the parties to demonstrate restraint and to refrain from any act that might undermine the well-being of the whole population. We condemn all violent action by Hamas and by any armed group using violence to pursue their aims. We welcome the adoption of Resolution 77-247 of the General Assembly. This resolution asks the International Court of Justice to issue an advisory opinion on the legal consequences of Israeli policies and practices affecting human rights of the Palestinian people in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem. Likewise, we recognize the work of this Security Council. The Council indeed adopted a statement S slash PRST slash 2023 slash 1 on Monday, the 20th of February. This was the first such statement on this issue for more than eight years and is the first formal outcome from the Security Council since Resolution 2334 that was adopted in December 2016. In the next few months, we will be celebrating the th uh, 30th anniversary of the Oslo Agreements. We hope that this commemoration will encourage the parties to demonstrate political will, to put aside their radical views and extremist discourse, and to reaffirm respect for human rights. Of course, we applaud the efforts of countries in the region in favor of reconciliation. President, we call for an end to be brought to the humanitarian crisis. This has particular repercussions on refugee women and children. To that end, we recognize the work of the United Nations Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East, UNRWA. New generations can't continue to be victims of shortcomings and recriminations. Young Palestinians and Jews must be able to look towards the future with confidence. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of Chile for that statement, and I give the floor to the representative of Qatar. Mr. President, first we'd like to express our gratitude to the Russian Federation for holding this open debate on the situation in the Middle East under the chairmanship of His Excellency, Mr. Sergei Lavrov, the Foreign Minister of the Russian Federation this morning. We'd also like to congratulate you on your presidency of the Council for this month. We welcome the participation of Dr. Riyad al-Maliki, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriate Affairs in the State of Palestine. We thank Mr. Tor Winsland, the Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process, for the briefing he gave. And we would like to associate ourselves with the statements delivered on behalf of the Arab Group uh, and uh, the OIC and the Non-Aligned Movement. Mr. President, in the past open debate over the situation in the occupied Palestinian territories, including East Jerusalem, a widespread degree of concern was expressed over the elevated levels of violence that 2022 witnessed and calls were issued to reverse this trend in order to avoid further deterioration and uh, suffering. However, the early months of this year have witnessed a continuation of the escalatory policies of the Israeli government, which required the Security Council to respond. It adopted a presidential statement in its meeting of the 20th of February, and in that meeting, 
The state of Qatar, on behalf of the Arab group, welcomed the presidential statement and expressed its deep concern over the extremist tendencies of the new Israeli government. It also stressed the pivotal role of the Security Council in confronting these violations. And since then, the dangerous viol uh, violations have continued by the occupation authorities and extremist settlers, the most dangerous of which was what happened in the Holy Al in, in the holy sanctuary of uh, the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Ramadan with no consideration given to the sanctity of the place or the time. And this month uh, coincided with several religious occasions for Muslims, Christians, and Jews. However, this did not stop the Israeli occupation authorities and extremist settlers from perpetrating blatant attacks on religious sites and the freedom of worship. The state of Qatar strongly condemned the storming of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa and its uh, and assaulting the worshippers there and preventing ambulances from reaching those injured as well as evacuating those that were trapped in the Al-Qibli mosque and the impositions that were imposed on Palestinians entering the mosque. And this came in line with uh, an extremist group uh, declaring uh, its agreement with the occupation authorities' police uh, to increase the number of hours where the al-Masjid al-Aqsa was stormed, uh, limiting and infringing upon the rights of Muslims and Christians uh, to reach freely and in an unhindered way places of worship in the al-Aqsa Mosque and the churches to perform religious rites is a violation by the occupying authority and is a violation of uh, the rele relevant security, uh, United Nations resolutions, including Resolution 2334. These most recent measures are an extension of a policy to Judaize uh, Jerusalem and a provocation of the feelings uh, of two billion Muslims around the world. And they threaten to lead to an explosion. And they threaten to dissipate any hope of a two-state solution that the, secure, that the international community agreed is the only way to, re, to settle the Middle East issue and establish a lasting peace. Here, the state of Qatar reiterates its condemnation of any attempts to Judaize the occupied city of Jerusalem and change its Arab, Islamic, and Christian identity. We stress the importance of respecting the legal and historic status quo in Jerusalem throughout Jerusalem, and to respect uh, the Al-Haram Al-Qudsi compound's status as a strictly Muslim place of worship uh, without any attempt to divide it by time or place. And we also stress uh, the importance uh, of the Jordanian guardianship of Islamic uh, and Christian Holy Shrine in Jerusalem. Occupation. The occupation's policies against the Palestinian people are the main reason for the lack of stability and for the violence. Therefore, the state of Qatar voted in favor of the General Assembly resolution that sent a request to the ICJ for an advisory opinion on the legal repercussions of the Israeli occupation and settlement activity and attempts to change the demographic composition of Jerusalem. The state of Qatar continues to uphold its duty to support the steadfast Palestinian people and to meet their humanitarian needs in cooperation with the United Nations, especially in the Gaza Strip which is subjected to an unjust siege. It has been so for over 15 years. The state of Qatar will continue to support improving the humanitarian situation and efforts to achieve a lasting peace. We confirm that for peace to prevail, the Israeli occupation of occupied Arab territories must end, and this includes the Syrian Golan and the occupied Lebanese lands. Moreover, Israel must immediately and fully stop settlement activities and attempts to annex land, and for the Palestinian people to regain the legitimate rights, including the right to establish 
establish an independent and contiguous state that is viable and that is within the 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital and in accordance with the resolutions of the Security Council and the Arab Peace Initiative. I thank you, sir. I thank the representative of Qatar for that statement. I now give the floor to the representative of Argentina. Señor Presidente. Mr. President, Argentina supports a peaceful, lasting, and comprehensive solution to the Palestinian question. We reaffirm our unwavering commitment to a two-state solution respecting the legitimate aspirations of Israelis and Palestinians to live side by side in peace and security. In this context, Argentina reaffirms its support for the inalienable right of the Palestinian people to self-determination and to form an independent and viable state recognized by all nations. We further reaffirm the right of the State of Israel to live in peace alongside its neighbors within safe and internationally recognized borders. Under these premises, my country has spoken on various occasions due to the concerning escalation in violence seen this year. We have reiterated our calls on the parties to avoid a greater level of confrontation and clashes. Argentina reiterates its concern at the persistent continued growth of illegal Israeli settlements in the occupied Palestinian territories, and we call for their expansion to be halted. The serious nature of the situation related to Israeli settlements has been recognized by the United Nations General Assembly and by the Security Council in Resolution 2334. We fully reaffirm the terms of that resolution. It, the resolution underscores that the settlements established by Israel in the West Bank and East Jerusalem have no legal validity, are contrary to international law, they hamper the path to peace, and they weaken the perspective for a two-state solution. Furthermore, and in this context, in February this year, our country expressed its concern at Israel's, is the Israeli government's decision to legalize nine new outposts and to build 10,000 homes in pre-existing settlements in the West Bank. Furthermore, Argentina reiterates its firm condemnation of terrorism in all of its forms and manifestations. Uh, and over the last few months, we have reaffirmed our dismay at the attacks against Israeli citizens and against citizens of other nationalities in the West Bank, in East Jerusalem, and in Tel Aviv. We once again express our condolences to the relatives of the victims. Argentina believes that the industry discriminate launching of rockets from the Gaza Strip and the south of uh, Lebanon to Israel is inadmissible. Argentina recognizes the right of Israel to exercise its self-defense, self emphasizing the importance of measures ta that measures taken must be respectful of international humanitarian law, particularly the principles of distinction and proportionality. In terms of East Jerusalem, Argentina believes that this is one of the fundamental issues and the final status of it must be defined by the parties through bilateral negotiations in accordance with relevant United Nations resolutions. We call on the parties, particularly Israeli authorities, to respect the legal, historic, religious status of holy sites. Turning now to the most recent events at the Al-Aqsa Mosque, Argentina at the time expressed its concern and reiterated that holy sites must be an area for uh, peaceful and safe prayer and religious reflection. Any attempt to deny or to relativize the historic link and the profound meaning of the holy sites in East Jerusalem uh, with any of the three monotheistic re uh, religions is completely unacceptable, and it doesn't serve the ultimate aim of finding a solution to the conflict. Argentina urges the parties to return to the path of negotiations in order to achieve fair and lasting peace in accordance with international law and the relevant resolutions of the General Assembly and the Security Council. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of Argentina for that statement. I now give the floor to the representative of Malaysia. Mr. President, my delegation expresses our appreciation to you for convening this important meeting. We welcome the presence of His Excellency Riyadh al-Maliki 
the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the State of Palestine. We also extend our thanks to Mr. Thor Wensland, UN Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process for his briefing. Malaysia aligns itself with the statements delivered by Mauritania on behalf of the OIC and the one to be delivered by Azerbaijan on behalf of NAM. Indeed, what we have heard today is disturbing. Barely four months into the year, already almost 100 Palestinians, including innocent children, are reported to have died and hundreds more wounded. The situation is showing no signs of abating. Malaysia strongly condemns the incursion of Israeli forces into the Al-Aqsa Mosque and their vicious attacks against worshippers, especially when Muslims were observing the holy month of Ramadan. Malaysia remains gravely concerned with the continued aggression and systematic oppression of the Palestinians through discriminatory policies, denial of basic human rights, imposition of harsh living conditions, as well as confiscation of their lands and properties. Mr. President, in line with Resolution 2334, our delegation urged both parties to exercise maximum refrain from acts of provocation incitement and inflammatory rhetoric to avoid further escalation of tensions. Resolution 2334 is also clear on the fact that all Israeli settlement activities in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem, are illegal under international law and must immediately and completely cease. Yet Israel remains defiant, which further deviate efforts towards achieving a peaceful and lasting two-state solution. Mr. President, it is extremely frustrating that the apartheid practices of Israel, including the annexation and illegal occupation, are routinely ignored. The impunity that Israel continues to enjoy is partly the failure of Security Council to hold Israel accountable for the violation and brutality it perpetrates. Malaysia, in this regard, calls on the international community not to condone such practice of double standards, which severely undermines the effectiveness and legitimacy of international law. It is incumbent upon the United Nations and the global community to provide protection to the Palestinian people from the heinous crimes that Israel continues to commit. Pursuant to the General Assembly Resolution 77-247, adopted in December last year. Malaysia urges all responsible member states to support the request for an advisory opinion on the question of Palestine from the International Court of Justice. In addition, Malaysia calls upon member states to contribute on a consistent and predictable basis to UNRWA towards supporting the financial needs of the Palestinian refugees. Mr. President, the people of Palestine can count on Malaysia's unwavering support in their efforts to create an independent and sovereign state of Palestine based on pre-1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. In this regard, we fully support the application of Palestine to become a full member of the United Nations and call upon the United Nations Security Council and General Assembly to favorably consider this legitimate application. I thank you. I thank the representative of Malaysia for that statement, and I give the floor to the representative of the Republic of Korea. Mr. President, I thank UN Special Coordinator for the Middle East, uh, Middle East Peace Process, Mr. Tor Venisland, for his timely briefing. I also reaffirm my government's full support for his ongoing efforts and dedications to bringing peace to the region. The Republic of Korea is deeply concerned about the escalation and sustained violence in Palestine since early this year. It is particularly worrisome that acts of violence and clashes led to a number of civilian uh, casualties in the region during Ramadan and Passover this month. This vicious circle of violence will undermine the foundation for a political solution. My government reaffirms its position that the status quo of holy sites in Jerusalem must be respected, and all relevant parties should undertake every effort 
to prevent a further deterioration of the situation in the area. In addition, violence against the civilians cannot be justified under any circumstances. We take this opportunity to condemn all terrorist attacks in the strongest terms. My government strongly encourages all relevant parties to maintain crucial momentum for engagement. In this regard, my delegation commends the recent meetings among the five parties, including Palestine, Israel, Egypt, Jordan, and the United States, in attempts to de-escalate tensions on the ground. We expect support for efforts by international parties, including the joint communiques issued at Akba in Jordan and Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt in February and March, respectively, and hope that it can lead to a more concrete steps in both establishing and maintaining much needed stability in the region. The Republic of Korea supports all diplomatic efforts by the international community to establish lasting peace in the region and reaffirms its driving commitment to continue its constructive role to this end. My delegation reiterates its firm belief that there is no alternative to a two-state solution wherein Israelis and Palestinians live side by side in peace and security within internationally re recognized borders as enshrined in the relevant Security Council resolutions. The Republic of Korea is deeply concerned with the Israeli government's decisions to expand its settlements in the West Bank this year, which would significantly undermine the efforts to establish permanent peace between Israel and Palestine based on, based on a two-state two solution. We urge the Israeli government to reverse its settlement activities, demolitions, and evictions, since these constitute clear violation of international laws and relevant Security Council resolutions. We also remain concerned about the deteriorating humanitarian situation in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip as conflict intensifies. The Republic of Korea expresses its strong support for ongoing efforts by the international community to meet the humanitarian and development needs of the Palestinian people. In this regard, my government decided to increase our support to the program budget of the United Nations Relief and Workers Works Agencies for Palestinian Refugees in the Near East. We will continue to support the UN UNRWA and its activities going forward. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the Republic of Korea for his statement. I now give the floor to the representative of Tunisia. Thank you, Madam President. First of all, I would like to congratulate the Russian Federation for presiding over the Security Council for this month, and I would like to, uh, to thank the uh, Minister Sergei Lavrov, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of uh, Russia, and I would like also to uh, thank Mr. Tone Wensland, and I welcome the Foreign Minister of uh, Palestine, and I would like also to appreciate uh, the uh, coordination efforts of uh, Tor Winsland. Madam President, the international community has recently witnessed flagrant escalation of aggressive practices and restriction policies adopted by the Israeli occupation against Palestinian people that have escalated, especially during the blessed month of Ramadan, as the occupation authorities deliberately violated the sanctity of the holy sites and have raided the courtyards of Al-Aqsa Mosque, especially by settlers and occupation forces, which provokes the sentiments and feelings of Muslims and in a flagrant violation of all international instruments and treaties. And we do strongly condemn the policies of the occupation and its attempts to change the legal and historic status quo of Al-Aqsa Mosque and Jerusalem, especially through settlement plannings, demolition of houses, compulsory eviction of Palestinians, as well as the 
flagrant and egregious violations of human rights. Thus, we do hold the occupation forces responsible for the for the actions taken in the territories, a matter that might impede the efforts towards peace. In this regard, we do stress the uh, Hashemite Jordanian historic custodianship of the Islamic and Christian holy sites in the city of uh, Jerusalem. Madam President, international addressing of the Palestinian question should not be hinged only on the vicious circles of violence without really looking into the root causes of the problem, which is the occupation in this regard. We call upon the international community to launch serious and effective and active negotiations within a specific timetable in order to achieve just and comprehensive peace based on the terms of references agreed upon, agreed upon as well as international resolutions. And as we are approaching the 75th anniversary of the Nakba, we do remember the sacrifices of the Palestinian people and their long suffering. We call upon the international community and the Security Council to provide the Palestinian people with the necessary protection and compelling the, occupi the occupying power to put an end to its aggressive practices and the mass punitive procedures and measures taken against the Palestinian people and to comply to the international law and the UN resolutions. We also call for holding the occupying power responsible for all the violations and for all the perpetrations according to the international law. In conclusion, we renew our steadfast uh, solidarity with the Palestinian people until they restore their legitimate rights, especially the right to self-determination, ending the occupation and establishing independent state with full sovereignty on the lines of 4th of June 1967 with Eastern Jerusalem as its capital. Thank you. I thank the representative of Tunisia for that statement and I give the floor to the representative of Kuwait. In the name of God, most compassionate, most merciful. Madam President, first of all, I would like to thank you for convening this important meeting in order to highlight the escalation of violence currently witnessed by the Palestinian occupied uh, territories by the Israeli occupation and the settlers. We would like also to thank the special coordinator of the peace process in the Middle East, Mr. Tor Vincent, for his briefing. Also, we do welcome the presence of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the State of Palestine, Dr. Riyad al-Malki. Madam President, a few days ago, the blessed month of Ramadan came to an end, and during that month, we witnessed unprecedented escalation on the part of the occupying power with support of cohorts of extremist settlers where they desecrated the sanctity of Al-Aqsa Mosque and where they assaulted unarmed and defenseless worshippers, including women and children, together with arresting a number of them. And this is a renewed vicious circle of bloody violence and provocation of the feelings of billions of Muslims all over the world. And in continuous disrespect to the appeals of the international community, especially the calls by the members of the Security Council, which called for de-escalation during the month of Ramadan. Thus, we found that it is incumbent on the Security Council to shoulder its responsibilities by condemning those serious violations by the occupying forces and to compel the occupying power to refrain from any attempts to change the legal and historic status quo of Al-Aqsa Mosque, including respecting the sanctity of al uh, Al-Quds al-Sharif. Also, we do reiterate the right of the State of Palestine to sovereignty over the city of Jerusalem, in addition to the fact that Israel, the occupying power, has no right whatsoever or any sovereignty whatsoever on the city of Jerusalem and its holy sites. Madam President, in a, number, in a, in a couple of days, we will be witnessing a special occasion in the General Assembly of the United Nations to revive the 75th anniversary of the Nakba 
Nakba, that Nakba uh, which is witness and attests to the languishing of successive generations, generations under the yoke of injustice due to the inability of the Security Council to find active mechanisms to implement the resolutions of the United Nations since 1948, notwithstanding the multiple international and regional efforts and endeavors, the unprecedented deterioration of the situation of the steadfast Palestinian people, especially the refugees, and the increasing systematic violence and illegal restriction of their rights together with the illegal um, uh, settlement activities and the activities of demolishing homes and confiscating lands and the continuing blockade on the Gaza Strip, all the foregoing um, only attests to the zero-sum mentality of the governments of the occupation, which is very manifest with this current government as it is one of the most extreme governments which have been witnessed throughout the last decades. And it is totally disrespectful of international uh, efforts. Meanwhile, it shirks its responsibilities to comply with international uh, obligations. Thus, any attempts to negotiate with this government is but in vain. So how can we speak about peace with such a colonial government which adopts extremism and indoctrinated violence and which takes apartheid as a means of governance? Having said that, we do renew our request to the international community and the Security Council to condemn all the violence, acts of violence on the part of the occupying power as well as the extremist settlers against Palestinian civilians and to hold them accountable for all those practices in the mean in the meantime all the perpetrators of those acts have to be held accountable in application of the rules of accountability and transparency also it is urgently important to provide the Palestinian people with international protection according to the proposals of the security secretary general of the United Nations which were approved by the General Assembly we reiterate in the meantime that just comprehend and comprehensive peace together with security and stability in the Middle East will only be realized when the Palestinian people achieve their inalienable and legitimate rights, including the right to self-determination, ending the colonial illegal Israeli occupation, as well as the independence of the state of Palestine with full sovereignty over its territories occupied since 1967 with Jerusalem as its capital. And in this regard, we do renew our welcoming the resolution of the general of General Assembly number 247-77, which requests an advisory opinion from the International Court of Justice on the presence of the colonial Israeli presence on Palestinian territories and the implications emanating therefrom, given that the same violates the Charter of the, Interna of the United Nations and the international law. And we do call upon all member states and all countries that believe in the values of justice and the principles of the international law to support the state of Palestine in this endeavor by providing legal submissions to the ICG. We also urge the International Criminal Court to finalize the criminal investigation and to hold responsible and accountable all those all perpetrators of crime, wars of crime and wars against humanity that were perpetrated by the occupation against Palestine, the unarmed Palestinian people, including the crimes of annexation, settlement, aggression, blockade on the Gaza Strip as well as public executions uh, against civilians, uh, journalists, and first aid, uh, uh, first aid medical crews, as well as compulsory eviction. Thank you, Madam. <coughs> I thank the representative of Kuwait for his statement, and I give the floor to the representative of Namibia. Madam President, allow me to congratulate the Russian Federation on presiding over the Security Council this month and for having convened this important meeting. I join speakers before me in welcoming His Excellency Minister Maliki to this timely meeting. I equally wish to thank the Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process for briefing us earlier. I wish to align my statement to those delivered on behalf of the Committee for the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people and the non-aligned movement, respectively. Madam President, this open debate takes place against the backdrop 
for what has been a year marked by a continuation of injustice, intensification of conflict, and expansion of settlements. The United Nations has been seized with the question of Palestine since 1947, when under Resolution 181, the Assembly decided to partition Palestine into two states, one Arab and one Jewish, with Jerusalem placed under a special international regime. Thus, for the past 76 years, I repeat, 76 years, the UN has recognized a two-state solution in accordance with 1967 borders as the path towards just and lasting peace. In charting this path to peace, the General Assembly and Security Council have adopted a broad range of resolutions which condemn Israel's occupation of East Jerusalem calling it illegal and calling for a just and lasting solution that takes into account the legitimate concerns of both Israelis and Palestinians. The primacy of the right to self-determination of the Palestinian people is central to resolving the question of Palestine. The right of the Palestinian people to self-determination is universally established and enshrined in the UN Charter. Our commitment to the UN Charter compels us to hold Israel accountable for the 56-year Israeli foreign occupation, which is also universally established. This occupation can be viewed through several prisms, including that of entrenched and systematic racial discrimination and persecution. As a country with a lived experience of colonial occupation, we in Namibia have a clear understanding of what constitutes apartheid and the illegal colonial occupation that Israel is committing, by all accounts, constitutes apartheid. We are attuned to the realities faced by the Palestinian people and cannot ignore them. They, they pain us deeply, and it is for this reason that we make yet another urgent appeal to the international community foremost this Security Council to act. The occupying power must be held to account for continued actions that are in violation of international law, international human rights law, and the resolutions adopted by this Council and the General Assembly. But I'm President, the Palestinian people should not wait any longer for their freedom, justice, and an opportunity to peacefully coexist in, the con in a contiguous state in accordance with the pre-1967 borders. As we approach the 75th year since the Nagba, and as a just peace seems ever more remote with rising dangers, this council has a duty to prevent another such catastrophe, prevent genocide, to protect a vulnerable people and pursue justice before it is too late. Madam President, the responsibility of the UN towards the resolution of the question of Palestine is a permanent one. We therefore support and have a full respect for all UN mandated processes geared at bringing about a resolution to this complex question. The consistent flagrant violation of international law, humanitarian and international human rights law denies the Palestinian people their most basic rights. The practice of unabated continued annexation and expansion of settlements is untenable, and if we well value the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people, we must show true and consistent commitment to their just cause by acting with a sense of urgency. And I thank you. I thank the representative of Namibia, of Namibia for his statement, and I give the floor to the representative of Azerbaijan. Madam President, I'm honored to speak on behalf of the 120 member states of the Non-Aligned Movement. At the outset, uh, I congratulate Russian Federation on its successful presidency of the Security Council this month and express appreciation for the opportunity for the movement to present its position on the question of Palestine. Madam President, during the ministerial meeting of NAM, on the sidelines of the high-level week of the 77th session of the United Nations General Assembly held on 21st September 2022, the ministers adopted, adopted a political declaration stressing inter alia that a just, lasting, 
and peaceful solution to the question of Palestine in all its aspects must remain a priority on the movement agenda and also a permanent responsibility of the United Nations until it is satisfactorily resolved in accordance with international law and the relevant United Nations resolutions and the international endorsed parameters. In this regard, the member state of the movement once again reaffirmed that this ongoing historic injustice with decades of Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territory and other Arab territories at its core continue to pose a serious threat to regional and international peace and security. As the Palestinian people continue to be deprived of their inalienable rights, including to self-determination and in independence, the prolonged international paralysis on this issue is inexcusable. The international consensus on a just solution is firm and clear, and there is an inalienable uh, abundance of multilateral political and uh, diplomatic tools to promote the achievement of a just and peaceful resolution. We must use them responsibly, and we in the NAM are ready to do so, and urge the Security Council to act forthwith with shoulder its responsibilities in this regard. The Security Council must uphold this charter duty to maintain international peace and security, and must act to implement its own resolutions. The question of Palestine cannot be the exception in international law and to the authority of this Council. The members of the movement call on the Security Council to overcome its paralysis on the Palestinian, Palestine question to justly resolve this protracted conflict and tragic injustice. The, the, this will not only open a new era for the people of the occupied territories, and the region, but will also restore credibility to this organ and our international system as a whole. Madam President, now I believe that Security Council Resolution 2334 from 2016 provides a viable path to peace, setting for the essential requirement and parameters for the realization of a just outcome on the basis of the two-state solution based on on the June 4th, 1967 lines and ensuring uh, the fulfillment by the Palestinian people of their inalienable rights, including to self-determination and the, in the independence of the state of Palestine with East Jerusalem as its capital and a just solution for the plight of the Palest Palestine refugees in accordance with, with General Assembly Resolution 194. NAM therefore reiterates its call for full respect of Resolution 2334 from 2016 and for the effective implementation of its provisions and obligations, particularly by the, by the occupying power, and including in terms of states' obligations with regard to distinction, which is a matter central to ensuring accountability. The movement also underscores the need for the inter intensification of international and re regional diplomatic efforts, including by the, this Council, aimed at bringing an end to the Israeli occupation that began in 1967 and achieving a just, lasting, and comprehensive solution. Similarly, the member states of the movement continue to call for full respect for and the implementation of all other relevant resolutions, including with, the, with regard to the completization of all Israeli settlement activities and the status of the occupied East Jerusalem. In this regard, NAM expressed grave concern about the deteriorating situation on the ground, which has been marked by raising violence, provocation, and incitement, particularly settler violence and terror that has led to the tragic loss of life or more civilians, including children, the detention of thousands of Palestinian civilians, and countless other human rights abuses and violence of international law. Action must be taken immediately the held, to help the escalate this volatile situation that must include a hold 
to all unilateral and unlawful measures by Israel, the occupying power in the occupied Palestinian territories, including East Jerusalem. Actions that violate the Security Council resolution, including violation of the historic and legal status quo of Jerusalem and its holy sites, are provocative dangers and destroy the perspective uh, for peace. We reiterate the call for full respect for the historic and legal status quo and for the historical Hashmet custodianship over the Christian and Muslim holy sites in the city and for the protection of the sanctity of the holy sites and for all relevant provisions of international law and Security Council resolutions. Uh, on the, the non-aligned movement commends the efforts of His Majesty King Mohammed VI as the chair of Al Quds Committee of the Organization of the Islamic Cooperation and welcome the call for All Good Jerusalem signed in Rabat on March 30, 2019. His Excellency Majesty King Mohammed VI of Morocco and His Holiness Pope Francis to stress the important role that All Good Jerusalem plays as a city of tolerance and mutual respect among the people of the three monotheistic religions and stress the need to preserve its specificities and its features as a city of peaceful coexistence. In this regard, NAM reiterates its rejection of the purported annexation by Israel of occupied East Jerusalem and underscore that continued threats of annexation by Israeli officials and continued settlement activities and forces displacement of Palestinian families from their homes and lands must be unequivocally condemned. Any such measures must be forthwith rejected as null and void and without any legal uh, effect and must be met with firm measures of accountability for such grave breaches, including by lawful countermeasures. Madam President, in relation to the Gaza Strip, the situation remains of great concern to the movement, particularly the grave humanitarian situation. Nam reiterate its call for the complete lifting of the illegal Israeli blockade, which continues to inflict dire humanitarian social and economic suffering on more than two million Palestinian children, women and men in Gaza. This crisis must be comprehensively addressed in accordance with international law and the relevant United Nations resolutions, including Security Council Resolution 1860 from 2009. In the absence of a just solution, now member states also reiterate their call for the continued provision of the needed humanitarian and socioeconomic assistance to the Palestinian people, including the Palestine refugees. The movement reaffirms the continued indispensability, indispensability of the United Nations Relief and Work Agency for Palestine refugees in the Near East along with other United Nations agency and international organization uh, in alleviating their plight and urge the international community to provide uh, the agency with sufficient and predictable, predictable funding. Ensuring continuity of uh, UNRWA and its significant con uh, contribution to regional stability must be of concern to this council. As Israel has clearly abdicated on its obligations at the occupying power to protect the Palestinian civilian population as prescribed by the Fourth Geneva Convention of 1949, the movement also reiterates its long-standing call for international protection for the Palestinian people to deter violation, promote the human security of the occupied population and prevent the loss of more innocent lives. In this connection, uh, the movement reiterates grave concern regarding the lack of accountability for all violations committed by Israel in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem, many of which may amount to war crimes. Israel must comply with international law and must be held to account for its blatant, blatant 
contempt of this Council and its international legal obligations. The absence of justice only leads to great impunity and recurrence of crime and destabilizes the situation in the ground, diminishing the prospects of, for peace. Now member states therefore continue to call for international action to ensure a cessation of and accountability for the violation being uh, systematically committed by Israel against Palestinian people. Madam President, with regard to the situation in the occupied Syrian Golan, the movement reaffirms that all measures and actions taken or to be taken by Israel the occupying powers, such as its illegal decision of 14 uh, December 1981 that purports to alter the legal, physical, and demographic status and the institu institutional structure, as well as the Israeli measures to apply its jurisdiction and administration there are null and void and have no legal effect. In this regard, and in line with NAMS principled position. The movement once again demands that Israel abides by Security Council Resolution 497 from 1981 and fully withdraws from the occupied Syrian Golan to its 4 June 1967 borders in implementation of the Security Council Resolution 242 from 1967 and 338 from 1973. Moreover, now member states emphasize that Israel must withdraw from all Lebanese territories, including Sheba farms, the Kfashchuba hills, and the northern, northern part of the village of Qajar, and an adjacent area north of Blue Line, in accordance with the relevant UN resolutions, in particular the Security Council Resolution 1559 from 2004 and 1701 from 2006. To conclude, the movement sees this opportunity to reiterate its call for collective inter international efforts to uphold international law to bring an end to this historic and grave injustice. Now member states reaffirm their commitment to promoting a just, lasting and, and comprehensive <coughs> and peaceful solution to the question of Palestine in all its aspects, including for the plight of the Palestine refugees, and reaffirm their support for the Palestine people in their struggle to achieve justice and fulfill their inalienable rights and legitimate national aspiration, including to self-determination, freedom and independence in their sovereign and independent state of Palestine with East Jerusalem as its capital. I thank you, Madam Chair. I thank the representative of Azerbaijan for her statement and I give the floor to the representative of Sierra Leone. Madam President, I thank you for convening this important debate. I thank the special coordinator for the Middle East peace process for his update. The recent incidents in the Middle East as it relates to the Israel-Palestinian conflict is an indication that until a holistic and comprehensive approach to the dispute is sought, a recurrence remains inevitable and it will continue to pose serious threat to regional and international peace and security. This protracted conflict in the Middle East continues to undermine every effort of the Security Council in upholding the principles of the UN Charter and fulfilling its core mandate of maintaining international peace and security. At this point, we as a community of nations need to meaningfully engage to stop the debts, displacement, loss of properties, and curb the immense fear instilled in the minds of both Palestinians and Israelis in the region. Decades after the adoption of the petition plan by the UN General Assembly, the Palestinians and Israelis are still exposed to violent conflicts leading to untold deaths, trauma, displacement, and anguish. 
It is in this regard that Sierra Leone calls on the Security Council to implement its own resolutions pertaining to the Israel-Palestinian question and to explore all possible diplomatic and political avenues that will lead to a peace process geared towards achieving a two-state solution with Israel and Palestine living side by side in peace. Madam President, Sierra Leone invites both Israel and Palestine to refrain from the unilateral actions that could exacerbate tension and trigger violence on this note. We sympathize with the victims of the prolonged violence. We condemn the rising violence, incitement, and all other actions that negate peace efforts and that are contrary to international law UN Security Council and General Assembly resolutions. We acknowledge the plight of the Palestinian refugees and reiterate the need for continued humanitarian and socio-economic assistance to the most vulnerable, especially women, the aged, children, and youth through the recognized UN agencies, non-governmental organizations, and other international humanitarian organizations that will guarantee their right to life, freedom, and prosperity. In closing, Sierra Leone calls on Israel and Palestine to take advantage of their shared responsibility to build mutual trust and advance the potentials for the two-state solution grounded on the pre-1967 borders in the context of international consensus based on a just and mutually acceptable solution. In this connection, any solution to current crises should be consistent with international law the relevant United Nations resolutions, the Madrid Principles and the Arab Peace Initiative, the Quartet, guided by the overarching principles of nonviolence, recognition of Israel, and acceptance of previous agreements arrived at in furthering the Middle East peace process. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Sierra Leone for their statement, and I give the floor to the distinguished representative of Norway. Thank you, President, and uh, thank you to Special Coordinator Venislan for your briefing. Norway remains deeply concerned about the security situation. The tension we witnessed recently during Ramadan, Passover and Easter could have easily spiraled out of control with far-reaching consequences for the whole region. We commend the parties for contributing to de-escalation the relative calm that has prevailed at Haram al-Sharif Temple Mount at the end of Ramadan has demonstrated that even during periods of elevated tension, it is possible to avoid serious escalation. We also recognize the effort of the UN and regional actors. This calming influence will still be needed in the weeks to come. We welcome the statement from the Aqaba and Sharm el-Sheikh meetings and call upon the parties to implement their commitments. We continue to urge Israel to observe the historic status quo of the holy sites in Jerusalem, including Jordan's custodial role. President, 75 years has passed since the partition plan for Palestine was approved by the UN. Norway voted in favor for the establishment of the State of Israel in 1947 and recognized the State of Israel in 1949. Also, 75 years ago, Norway voted in favor of a Palestinian state. Norway remains committed to the two-state solution. Although the prospect for a political settlement right now look bleak, Norway continues to believe that the two-state solution is the best way to ensure the security and human rights of both Israelis and Palestinians, as well as both peoples' right to self-determination. President, as chair of the Donor Group for Palestine, HLC, we continue to work actively with the parties and the international community to improve economic conditions and build Palestinian institutions for a Palestinian state. We remain committed to this work, even in these very difficult times. 
Next week, Norway will therefore reconvene the donor group to a meeting in Brussels, hosted by the European Union. Together, the parties and the international community will review the very serious financial situation of the Palestinian Authority and set goals to safeguard the viability of the two-state solution. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Norway for her statement, and I give the floor to the distinguished representative of Sri Lanka. Madam President, <clears throat> I thank you for giving me the floor. I also welcome Minister Maliki. Madam President, it is an indictment on all of us that for more than seven decades, there has been a long struggle to find a just and peaceful solution to the situation in Palestine. Sri Lanka has long advocated continuous support for the sovereign independent state of Palestine and calls on the international community and all parties concerned to make renewed efforts to achieve a lasting solution, including through the early implementation of the United Nations resolution on a two-state solution based on the 1967 borders. It is said, Mr. President, that you cannot separate peace from freedom because no one can be at peace unless he has his freedom. One might observe that this was a salutary wish in the teeth of the recent statement made by the Secretary General and numerous member states, which indicated that any attempt at unilateral annexation of a state's territory by another state is in violation of international law. It is clear that any occupation of territory by force incurs international responsibilities and would hold an occupying force accountable. We have regrettably learned of the unabated forcible acquisition of land and of natural resources of Arab land. We have heard of the 15-year blockade and the closure of the Gaza Strip, which has been described as an open-air prison. All this, Mr. President, has had serious impact on Palestinian life and even perhaps on Israel. We are saddened to hear of the damaging impact of the children as a result of the ongoing aggression. It was not long ago that the, the Security Council adopted a presidential statement expressing its deep concern on the ongoing situation in the occupied Arab lands. This council reaffirmed its unwavering commitment to the vision of a two-state solution where two democratic states, Israel and Palestine, live side by side in peace within secure and recognized borders. That commitment stressed that both peoples are entitled to equal measures of freedom, security, property, and dignity, and went on to observe that continuing aggression, which, whichever quarter it comes from, is dangerous and imperils the viability of the two-state solution. Madam President, we cannot but discourage all unilateral measures that impede peace, and we condemn such action, including acts of terrorism, and call upon all parties to clearly condemn such acts and refrain from incitement to violence. We plead with all parties to observe calm and restraint and refrain from provocative actions, incitement, and inflammatory rhetoric. We also must discourage instances of discrimination, intolerance, and hate speech motivated by racism or directed against persons belonging to religious communities. We also must stand firm in our call for the upholding of an unchanged status quo at the holy sites of Jerusalem. It was only recently that this assembly noted the important regional diplomatic efforts made and called for an urgent halt to any activity that will be detrimental to the peace process. Regrettably, the holiest of the months to both denominations have not passed peacefully. We therefore reiterate the calls for all parties to refrain from steps that could escalate tensions in and around the holy sites. We do appreciate that there had been dramatic changes, not only in Israel and Palestine in recent years, but in the region as a whole. We believe that there's a need to consider a new discourse about this unending problem first and foremost, having regard to the dramatic changes on the ground in recent years. Mr. Madam President, it would finally appear that the story of Palestine from beginning to date has all the shades of colonialism and disposition which the international community treats as being multifaceted, difficult to understand, and even more difficult to resolve. We do appreciate that it is difficult to challenge established powers 
and interest when they refuse to hear the moral voices of civil societies and their objectives, but we must continue to encourage peace for there is always a requirement to think carefully about whether more can be done in a bid to resolve this long outstanding issue. We have to find a way forward and a way out of this ongoing catastrophe. It would appear that this vision is clearly based on the desire to be of assistance to the people of Palestine and on real political considerations of the other. Many of those who support the two-state solution as an ideal settlement are perhaps saying it very sincerely. But at the same time, it has helped us diplomats and politicians to remain ineffective. However, this language is put in place as the best solution, although may not be completely satisfactory. Madam President, our hopes and prayers will be in vain if we fail to ignite our hearts for peace in this once blessed land. We cannot wait much longer. We cannot permit this, this issue to escalate any further. Sri Lanka wishes Palestine genuine peace, which has been long overdue. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Sri Lanka for his statement, and I give the floor to the distinguished representative of Bahrain. Madam President, I welcome the presidency of uh, His Excellency Mr. Sergei Lavrov uh, over the meeting this morning, and I would also like to thank the delegation of the F Russian Federation for holding this important open debate on the situation in the Middle East, including the Palestinian question. I would also like to welcome His Excellency Mr. Riyad al-Malki, the Foreign Minister of the State of Palestine, and I would also like to thank Mr. Torn Winsland, the Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process, for his valuable briefing. Madam President, the events in the Middle East uh, uh, and the crises that have prolonged with their impacts and socioeconomic implications require uniting the settlement in peaceful means and renouncing intolerance and violence and working together to increase the prospects for a fair peace uh, in a manner that uh, fulfills the aspirations of the people. The Kingdom of Bahrain reiterates uh, the centrality of the Palestinian question and the need to preserve the peace process and regional efforts and international efforts that aim to establish an independent Palestinian state on the borders of June 4, 1967 with East Jerusalem as its capital as per the two-state solution and the principles of international law and the Arab Peace Initiative. The Kingdom of Bahrain affirms the need to continue to protect worshippers in Al-Aqsa Mosque and the holy sites and to preserve the historical status quo in Jerusalem as well as UN resolutions while respecting the role of the Jordan, Jordanian Kingdom as custodian over the holy sites. Madam, Mr. President, the Kingdom of Bahrain has expressed uh, its welcome for the uh, Troika Declaration uh, by Saudi Arabia and Iran under the uh, sponsorship of China and the Kingdom of Bahrain hopes that this agreement will be a positive step on the path towards dispute settlement and ending regional conflicts uh, entirely through diplomacy and dialogue and through basing international relations on a basis of mutual respect, understanding and good neighborliness and the non-interference in the domestic affairs of other states and the commitment to the UN Charter and international custom and law. Mr. President, the Kingdom of Bahrain expresses uh, its regret uh, to the, uh, the ongoing armed conflict in Sudan and its serious implications on residents and citizens of Sudan. And we call on the Sudanese parties to give priority to uh, wisdom and to end the fighting and seize the bloodshed and use dialogue to reach political solutions that preserve 
the peace and security of Sudan and protect the resources of Sudan. In conclusion, Mr. President, the Kingdom of Bahrain reiterates the need to continue cooperation and coordination to support all efforts that aim to reach a political solution that establishes peace and stability in this vital area of the world in a manner that benefits all people of the world. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Bahrain for his statement. There are no more names inscribed on the list of speakers. The meeting is adjourned.